my ducks, my swans, welcome to the pond. My name is Dorian from group82university.com, group82basketball.com. Basketball is a love language for me. As y'all come in here, hit like, hit share, hit subscribe, write in the comments. Let me know where y'all coming from. Let me know where y'all watching from. You know, what I'm going to do tonight is probably hop on and watch some some full game footage or even some highlights. And even if any of y'all, you know, who are interested and you want me to watch you and what you got going on, you know, we'll pull up your highlights so I can scout you. So appreciate all y'all that's coming in here. BX Bamson, what's going on with you? Where you watching from, bro? Hit like, hit share. Let me know where all y'all watching from. Let's get more people in here. You know, it's my first time going live on IG with it. IG, y'all write comments too. I don't know if it's going to show up or not, but you know, y'all let me know how y'all see me. Let me know what is. So, yeah, I want to watch some watch some highlights. Marshall, Texas. Where is that? <laughs> is that, that has to be. Is that near Dallas? That sounds like it might be near Dallas or something like that. Where is it? Hit share. If you got film on, on YouTube, just let me know. Put the, put the link inside the comments right now. I should be able to pull it up, click it. And we can watch you or whatnot. We can just start breaking stuff down right now. You know, I want to show y'all what I got going on. So this is my website, group82basketball.com. And, you know, just going through and letting y'all know kind of like my basketball resume and where all this stuff comes from, the things I've been able to do. Like, I, I've coached six NBA players. Buzz, Troy, played with the Lakers, with LeBron them. J.R., he went to Duke. He is on the Raptors now. He <laughs> – be messing around, get 80, 90 million in the summer. We see, I hope he do get a get a bag. He's in a good opportunity for himself. Bree, he had a hot second with the Heat and with the Rockets. And, you know, there's a video of him and Eric Spolster leading him in, like, training camp or whatnot because Briante was an incredible defender. Like, would have broke the NCAA all-time steals record. I think he was, like, eight steals away his senior year, and he snapped his ACL, played at VCU Phenomenal. Travion Graham, one of the best scorers that I've coached as far as, like, seeing in person. He was at VCU. Patricio, this is my guy. I ain't seen him in so long. He's from Argentina. I coached him. And Travion was on the Timberwolves. Um, I coached Patricio at Mont Verde. He, he played with the Magic for a little bit, got with the Spurs for a little bit. Uh, one time me and him went to a Magic game. It was me, him, his mom, his dad. Manu Ginobili gave us tickets, so we had talked to him. It was all cool. And then Devontae DSR, he's like a Naptown legend. Really is. Been the same size since he was like 12, 13 years old. You know, worked him out, trained him a little bit. Would have got him to Mont Verde if I would have stayed that next year. He was definitely coming, but Devontae was a man. You know, these are all the schools that I've had players play at, you know, and this is a lot. So, you know, just go through and look at every single logo. You know, we've sent some guys to some big schools. I've sent some guys to some big schools. I say we. God has allowed me to be in a position to send guys to big schools and all conference, all defensive three McDonald's All-Americans, three conference players of the year, three defensive players of the year, two first-team All-Americans, a national player of the year, shout out David Logan, and a 2016 Summer Olympian. These are the positions that I've had in the NBA, done a little bit of data analysis. I was a Summer League Scout 2012. I was a scout for the Portsmouth Invitational. I was a human resource and communications intern with the Pacers. Coached at this FIBA EuroLeague free agent camp in 2010. It was in Vegas, actually, and uh, the best player out there was Josh Acognon, who went to Cal State Fullerton. He ended up playing with the Kings for a little bit. But, you know, that's when I was working with Barry. What was Barry's last name? He, was, he runs winning ways out in Orlando. I can't remember Barry's last name. But he was cool. He was always smoking them Marbell Reds, breast milk cigarettes. Uh, this is where I got started. Leaves McCray College. Shout out to Scott Poles Grove for the opportunity. Went there and came down on the Mount Ver, was able to do all this stuff, director of national recruiting, advanced scouting. Then went up to VCU, worked for Shaka, went over there, director of basketball operations, Jacksonville. And then, you know, came back home and coached Andy Hoosiers. And that's where I was able to coach JR and Chris Wilkes and Paul Scruggs and all that. But, you know, just a little background on what I've done. This game of basketball really is a love language for me. So we're going to pull up y'all tape. So make sure y'all put y'all tape in the description and in the comments. Y'all on YouTube, hit like. You on Instagram, hit like. Facebook, all that. Super stickers, super chat, super st Hey, give me money. Click the, click the $5, $10, whatever. Services now, this is what I'm offering, man. I've, I've been doing these, uh, these scout reports on YouTube, and people have been asking me to break down their game. So what I'm doing now, we're doing jump shot analysis. 
And I got one in there right here. Y'all can go watch. Y'all can go see of one that I did. Only $49, man. Really good breakdown. This is something that when I was a young player, when I was 13, turning 14, Rick Mount, who played at Purdue, played in the ABA, averaged 30 at Purdue, one of the best shooters I've ever seen. You know, we were at his camp. He had a shooting school. It wasn't a camp. It was literally a shooting school. You didn't play five-on-five, one-on-one, nothing. It was just shooting. It was phenomenal how niche it was. And when I went to that camp, he was probably in his late 40s, maybe 50. And he gave the camp speech at the beginning, gave a 30-minute speech. And in the beginning of the camp, while he was doing that 30-minute speech, he was shooting. This man missed two shots in 30 minutes. I don't remember a word he said. But I remember he missed two shots in 30 minutes. And I listened to everything he said about shooting. So one part of that camp was they did a jump shot analysis. It was on VHS. And I was so glad to get that and had that. So that's something I wanted to offer to young players. Now I'm doing it now. See how God works. So you want that, man. It's only $49. Think Afterpay allows you to break it up into four payments or something like that, too, for like 10 bucks. So go click that, group82basketball.com backslash services. I put that right there. Um, then game analysis. So those y'all want y'all games broken down, game analyzed. I'm doing that. You want one quarter? It's right there. You want one half? I do that. You want a full game? I do that. Cause these do do take a while. You know, I really watch the game. I really study. I really look at a lot of things, and I give you a lot of great feedback. And I don't know anybody else is doing this at all, especially at this level. Um, then coaching. You want to hop on me one on one to really develop you a plan. I know a lot of y'all going to AAU. Right now, I know a lot of y'all going into summer basketball. All that stuff's about to start picking up because your normal season, your winter season, school ball season just ended, right? So you want to hop on for a plan for you to get better to make the eighth grade team next year or make the seventh grade team next year or to make the freshman team, make JV, make varsity, get more playing time at the level that you're at. Get a scholarship offer. If you want to sit down, and me, you, and your parents, we can really have a real conversation about getting you to the next level. So you want to hop on the call with me. I'm always open to that. We develop a whole plan, and it's up to you to stick to it. But we develop a whole plan. So you want to do that, hop in there, do that. Written scout report, those y'all don't want the visual, want to do the written, I can do that as well. And for those y'all, man, that want a whole package, you want everything. You want the jump shot analysis because you a serious hooper. You want full game because you a serious hooper. You want the one-on-one. -on -one. You want the written scout report. You know, all that together is six fifty. But we give it to you instant savings. Get it for two ninety nine, and as low as thirty seven dollars with afterpay. So, like I said, y'all want this, man. I know a lot of y'all been asking me to break your stuff down. So here we are. Want to give y'all opportunity to do this. So go ahead, man, click that link, get in there, start ordering something. Order for a hooper that you know in your life. You know, I wish I'd have had this stuff. Like, I wish we had all this information that we have now and people could do these things because y'all are able to learn so much about the game. It's the IQ aspect of the game that is missing and it's not really being taught, right? Basketball, there's a rhythm and when you keep doing the same repetitions over and over and over and over again, you're going to get nice. But it eventually gets to the point, man, where it's like you have to be able to have a mental game. You got to be able to think this game out. And if you can't think this game out, you're not going to be able to stand a chance. So, But is, is YouTube, is Instagram working? I don't know. I'll figure that out. Maybe I should have went live. But let me know if y'all have any game tape. Y'all have game tape. Send it in. Yep, it's near Dallas. What's up? Do you, do you still coach? So my goal right now, man, is to get to the NBA. That, that was my goal when I first started coaching, was to get to the NBA, and now that's my goal. So everything I'm doing right now, you know, Jesus allows it. I'm going to be in the NBA next year. Somebody staff, that, that's what I'm trying to do. So we'll see. Wherever God wants me, that's where I'm going to be. Have you seen I'm done with the 90s basketball discourse? Yeah, I don't uh, – yeah, I don't – most people who are fans of basketball are idiots. You know, they're not – people that understand the game, hardly at all. And so they can't break down film. So when they try to say, I'm done with this, I'm done with that, it's like, if you weren't there, you're not really going to be able to understand it unless you have a basketball trained eye. If you have a trained basketball eye, then you can see it right now. You know, you can look at any era, you can see who is dominant. And for a lot of people, they can't see that. So anybody that says they're done with the 90s, it's like, I don't, I don't care. Like, you don't understand basketball. So it is what it is. So Nick Wayne, what's going on, bro?
So y'all hit like, hit share. You got uh, film put in there, but if not, I really want this Instagram to work. Maybe I should have. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Maybe I am going. Hmm. Who cares? All right. Do you do one on one in person or online? You know, if my all this stuff, this one on one call is online. The the in person. If you're in Houston, we could possibly meet up. But you know, this what, what I'm telling y'all is, it's more of a mental thing, man. It's more of a mental thing than as an actual physical thing. Like me taking you through drills and training that I've taken these other guys through. It's like we gonna do a session. We gonna do two sessions. We gonna do three sessions. Whatever it is, and it's gonna get to the point where like I'm gonna be moving. I'm gonna be traveling. I'm not a dedicated trainer. That's not who I am. Like most dedicated trainers. They have an area that they're going to stay in. They have a city that they're going to stay in. They have a state that they're going to stay in, right? They're not any of these guys that are traveling all the time. They have a home location. They have a home base. That's not me. Like, I'm an actual coach. And what I was saying is the mental aspect. Like, nobody, nobody out here is training on the mental aspect. Nobody. They're just not, right? They're only training on the physical. Like, who's teaching you how to scout tape? Who teaches you how to break tape down? Who sees you how to do any of these things? So everything I'm going to do is be online for you. But all right, let's pull up. Since ain't nobody showing, let's go. This thing always in the way. Let's go Cooper Flag. I want y'all to kind of see what I'm looking at. So when I go watch somebody, I'm really going to the full game. So Cooper Flag full game. This is actually a game that we want to see. Can Verizon 5G home? I always turn the sound off. Move this to the side a little bit. And what I'm looking for, man, is I'm looking very early. I'm trying to make sure that this dude is who we say he is. Uh, and this dude is is making sure that, that everyone who talks about this guy, like, oh, he's the next this, he's the next that. I want to make sure that the expectations aren't unrealistic. And I feel like for Cooper that they are at this point. So first thing that you're doing when you scout and you want to identify him. So this is Cooper right here, right? They're in a jump ball situation. No one's around him. This is Liam McNeely who just decommitted from IU. For those of y'all that haven't followed that story, that's absolutely insane. This is Derek Queen. He just committed to Maryland. Liam McNeely was trying to get him to come to IU. And now neither one of them were coming to IU. IU is Indiana. Uh, these three, Cooper, McNeely, and Derek Queen, these are McDonald's All-Americans. Asa Newell, came here, he's going to Georgia, if I'm not mistaken. And then you got Robert Wright, who's their point guard. He's going to Baylor right here. Right here, number three, this is A.J. DeBonsa. This is, to me, the best player in all of high school basketball right now. And I think this might be Tyran Stokes. I'm not particularly sure, but we'll see. So Cooper's off ball, but he's not the primary ball handler. And when somebody's the number one recruit, they're not a primary ball handler. That means the other person's in it. Ball screen. That was a bad read by Williams. And that was a horrible pass. That is Tyran Stokes. Will this let me stop the tape? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, it will. Okay. Let's, let's look at this ball screen. So, all right. So, ball screen. What I don't like what Cooper's doing right here is he has his hands up. Like, that's going to be a foul in college and even in the NBA. Like, you pushing somebody like that. Like, girls really set their screen like that. But – he does have a nice, strong base, and that is going to be a, a real solid screen. I think Robert Wright just didn't let it get, just didn't let it develop at that time. But if I was Cooper, I would bring my hands down. It's more important for a boy to protect your nuts than to protect your chest. Damn. Sorry, Lord, I dropped T all on my face. This is set play. Iverson cut. So, for those y'all don't know what Iverson cuts is. You see how Asa's going below, 
right? And then Cooper's going on top, and then you got Derek Queen on this elbow and Liam Neely on this elbow. This is called Iverson. The reason it's called Iverson because Larry Brown in the 2001 Sixers when they went to the finals, he ran this with Allen Iverson all the time. And this Cooper flag would be who Allen Iverson was at that time. Coming across, entry, elbow. I guess that was supposed to be a read. So he's heads in the way. Tough shot by Leo. That was a bad shot. Derek Queen, great offensive rebound. He's going to be a great college big. I don't know what the hell was that. This dude literally threw it over his head. AJ DeBonsa. Now they running double drag, looks like. Jab, cross jab. Now I want y'all to pay attention to this. Look, we got 14 seconds left on the shot clock. I'm not mistaken, I think they're playing with a 30-second clock. And the ball is still almost out of half court. Prolific Prep hasn't gotten the ball to the interior at all. That is something when you're watching basketball, I want you to pay attention to. I want you to pay attention to how often the ball gets inside of the paint. Now in the, this game that we play, a lot of people are doing this five-out offense, kind of like how Prolific Prep has right here, one, two, three, four, five. But you got to get the ball inside the paint to get to the teeth of the defense to really get some easy buckets. Drive wide open. You see what I'm saying? Like, it, it didn't even take him anything to get to the teeth of the defense. Handoff, Liam, Liam McNeely sleep. He's supposed to slide over and take this away or run to AJ. And look at this. Austin Newell barely gets his hand in there. He does a nice tuck away. Derek, Derek Queen is not a shot blocker. This dude's faster. Finishes. That's, that's the laziness. That's the stuff I see in high school basketball and college basketball. It started to happen in the NBA, too, but in the NBA – you know, that probably would have been a block shot right there. Cooper Flag. Watch his, watch his shot fake. Like, he, he does a shot fake, but the ball never comes up. His foot is already turned, and his shoulders are, are turned. Tyran Stokes is young. He's a sophomore. He's an undisciplined defender. He has cement feet. And so, Cooper Flag, this shot fake that he made is just absolutely trash. Like, it's nothing. But he still was able to get there. Tyrant Stokes still was able to almost deflect that. Cooper missed. Good block. Money. He can hit that. Cash. Let's see what questions that y'all got. I send my film salute. Bet you put your film inside the comments. I don't, I don't see it in here. You got to pull up to player's choice one time. Do you think you could coach an NBA team? Absolutely. No doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. I already got my head coach of philosophies and what I'm standing for. No doubt in my mind. Kind of like that play. I want y'all pay attention to this again. So, this kid is going to wrap around off of this screen here. He's going to come down. I think Tyran sets a pin down for him, and he's going to pop out. Once he wraps around this screen, this kid right here, he's going to come set a high ball screen. So, there's a wrap around, high ball screen, fake. And look, this, this kid's head is under the, the rim as the high ball screen is coming. I think Tyran is supposed to be setting a ball screen right here. That would make a lot more sense because look at this dude. Like, he's a shooter. Look at him. He's ready to sprint off of there. But it looks like Tyran's not even paying attention. Yep, it is. Look, Tyran figured it out right at the last minute, so he messed that play up. That would have been a wide open three if Tyran hit that screen right. Another ball screen now. AJ got to create. Dane. AJ kicked it. There's little stuff like that, man, like – you know, Tyran not knowing to play at that time. And maybe it's it's a big game. He's a sophomore. Game just started. You know, lights might be too bright right now. But you can't have that. You can't have those type of mental lapses. Especially on, like, the second play of the game. You know that they talked about it. Still, good hands, Cooper. Now, that's, that's the stuff that he does exceptionally well. First of all, this is a horrible pass. 
And this is the wrong person to be throwing horrible passes to. His his jump and his reach, you know that's going to get snatched. He gets up there, gets his hand on it, gets control, one, two, and look at where he takes off from. This dude swiped in on him, and Cooper still with the great pin ultimate step goes up and knows he got to finish this with authority, and he does. You know, that's, that's the stuff that at Duke they're going to get really excited for. So they messed the play up. So this, remember we were just talking about Iverson cuts, right? This is the same formation that Montverde was running on the other side. AJ is trying to point this dude through because he's supposed to line up over here and they come over for the Iverson cut below and AJ's going to come around up top. But look, AJ's coming around and this dude's clogging up. He's messing up the actual space and the actual timing. He tries to spin, sprint off, and then Cooper's able to get his hands in there and knock it away. You know, prolific prep didn't come out immediately focused. Obviously, this is Montverse tournament. This is their home gym. You know, they, they were locked in, but it doesn't look like Prince Press really locked in like that. I don't know what they're doing. Are they calling it again? Look, Tyran don't even know the play. This is, this is horrible. They got bailed out. This is horrible basketball. Look at this. Look, look at AJ. AJ is the one that, that knows the plays. Watch him. Look, he's telling Tyran to cut through, cut through, cut through. Tyran sleep again. If I was the coach, I sub him out. Like, you ain't ready to play. They got bailed out. Derrick Queen, that was a stupid foul. Oh, they call it travel? Once y'all notice what they did on this possession, Montver was determined to get it in, inside. So, looks like Asa Newell says going to set a pin down for Liam. Derek Queen sets a pin down for Cooper. Cooper's going to catch it. If Tyran Stokes had been on Cooper's tail, as long as his pass is from Robert Wright to Cooper, he really could have picked that off. But once again, you know, his head's not in the game right now. Some of y'all have asked me to do a scout on Tyran Stokes. I don't think I am. You know, he uh, he got to get a little bit better, and I don't want to – he's 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 young. I'll wait. Anyways, this play is to get this inside to Derrick Queen. They look inside. They're, Derrick Queen doing all this acting and flopping. Cooper's looking inside. That ain't there. Don't, he's going to reverse it back up top. Austin Newell does a – or is it Asa? I don't know how to pronounce his name. He does a great job. This is called ducking in, right? He was outside the block, and now he's using his body to push that defender up under the rim, and he's – Ducking in front of the rim. Derrick Queen, this pass is right here. All you do is throw it to his left hand, even though this dude's looking. But he throws it too late, and they, all right, they call a foul right there. I think my is the best team in high school basketball. I've watched a few teams, you know, and they, they're the ones. They're just the most complete. You know, they're a very, very complete team. Boyle did an outstanding job building this roster. Liam McNeely was wide open for three. Oh, these guys so many weapons. I mean, they essentially got five McDonald's All-Americans. You know, got five dudes that will have an impact at the collegiate level. AJ being funky with the ball. Now he's in one-on-one. -on -one. Now this is how AJ got to play in the NBA. Now he's getting double team. Give it up. Who's there to help? Nobody. Get ripped. Horrible. Scoop under under. You gonna call a timeout? Yep, absolutely. It's horrible, horrible. So, ain't nobody got no game tape. Y'all hit like, hit share, get some more people in here. Who else do y'all want me to pull up? Is there anybody else y'all want to see broken down? We can do some college. We can do some NBA. There's a couple of sites I do. I go to watch like NBA clips. What do you think about the '90s? Um, what do I think about it? I mean, it's a phenomenal era of basketball. You know, there was the physicality, the spacing was up under the three-point line. So the physicality was a lot more because guys were trying to get as close to the basket as they possibly could. Um, with that said, you know, the guys that dominated in the 90s, 
they would dominate any era. So you're talking about Jordan, you're talking about Shaq, you're talking about Akeem, you're talking about David Robinson. Um, I'm trying to think of what point guard. I mean, I think Kevin Johnson would have a great time now. You know, those dudes would have dominated in basketball. John Stockton, you know. But you know, I don't understand why people keep comparing it. Like, if you didn't watch you didn't watch it, you didn't watch it. Joseph Allen basketball 2022-2023. All right, we'll look you up. Is you right here, sophomore, Dallas Christian, 435, 716. Yeah, all right, cool. Let's look what we got here. Joseph Allen, 6'4", sophomore. Let me maximize it for y'all. Dallas Christian College, 3.4 GPA. Congrats on that, young man. Best game, he had 29, 10, seven blocks. So when I see this, He's saying 6'4", sophomore. When I see 10 rebounds, 7 blocks, I'm thinking, okay, he's probably an undersized big man. He's probably an undersized four. He's probably what we would consider probably like a Draymond Green of his level. But we all know that's just assumption when I read that. Awarded second team all region, 14 and a half points, five boards, two blocks, definitely, you know, shot blocker, 55%, 45% from three, 71% free throws. So that's good that even though he's a shot blocker, he still can hit threes, but I wonder – what the clip was, like 45%. Did you take, you know, 11 threes and hit five? I don't know. So let's see. Versus D1, 12 points, 40, 50, 88. So where are you at? As you? You more like a guard. You like a Patrick Beverly. <laughs> That's what it really looks like. You know, like just uh, the uh, tenacity and like the ferociousness and like the body movements. You know, how you sliding around, moving around, got that block. This is great multiple efforts. Give me that. Now, that's, that's, that's the stuff that coaches, they, they want to see. You know, like if I say that you look like a Patrick Beverly type, right, because look at that, like how he slides, like, Obviously, you slipped on the floor, but how often do we see Pat Bev do that and he still gets to where he needs to get to and finish? You know what I mean? Shot fakes and all that. So, it shows me that you aren't like a primary guard, but you are a dude that plays hard and you can defend. Get that block. Spend all that time talking. Point guard gets ripped easy, and you there, and you timing it, timing it. D this is beautiful. Didn't foul him. At this point, you already knew. The basketball IQ. You already knew that he's going up, and I'm going to meet this up there. Give me that. You know, so wherever you go for the next level, you need to really market yet because your, you, yeah, your offense looks kind of wild. Wherever you go for the next level, you need to market yourself as an elite defender. You need to be an elite defender. You need to be picking dudes up 94 feet. You need to be a pest. You need to be in the best possible shape that you possibly could be because you have great timing on your blocks. You have great hands. Like your, your shot is unorthodox. It looks like Sean Marion. I don't know if y'all know who Sean Marion I have to pull up Sean, Sean Marion. I have to. I have to. I have to. Joseph, we're, we're going to go go back to you. But, I, you know, we got some young folks in here, and I want y'all to see Sean Marion Jumper. Like, Sean Marion is this dude right here, number, was he 11 with, with the Mavs? Zero, coin the Matrix. Look, look at this. Looks very similar. It looks very, your shot looks very similar to Sean Marion, dog. <laughs> Watch, this is, he's in the corner over here. Look at this. Very, very similar. Another one. You know, so it's not so much about the form. I know people probably give you crap about that, but, you know, that's, that's something that's going to be possible for you. You're still going to be able to get those shots off. But to get on the floor is going to be defense for you, you know, because you coming from, I'm assuming this is Juco, so you coming from that era, from that area, if you want to play and make any money, it's going to be all about defense. Guys don't want to play defense. 
guys don't know defense, guys don't learn the game on defense. Because what you're doing right here, these pull-up jump shots and your ball handling and all that, there's a whole bunch of dudes that can do that at a much higher level than you, right? But you got to think about, like, what, what can I be top 20 in the world at? If you want to play in the NBA, what can I be top 20 in the world at? In the NBA, you got to have some sort of top 20 skill. And if you can be a top 20 perimeter defender, if you can be a top 20, you know, ball pest, if you can be a top 20 getting deflections, if you can be a top 20 with dribble poke aways, you know, if you can be a top 20 with putting clamps on guys or blocking shots on the perimeter or top 20 offensive rebound or some sort of skill like that, the more top 20 skills that you can uh, accumulate, that's going to make you a lot more valuable to scouts. That's going to make you a lot more valuable to GMs, right? Because like I said, like you are a great shot blocker. You got great timing. You can be an elite defender. And at 6'4", that's what you're going to have to do. You got to guard the point guard. You need to be a point guard stopper. You need to be a Trey Young stopper. You need to be a John Morant stopper. You need to be a Steph Curry stopper. That's what you need to focus on because there's thousands of dudes that got offense better than you. But how many of them will have defense better than you? And that defense is what gets you on the floor. And the great thing about our sport in basketball, even though the coach is putting you on the floor for defense, you got to play offense. So if you start getting buckets, he ain't going to take you out. And that's how you can develop yourself. So, you know, I like your energy. I like your tenacity. I would have to watch full games. Bro, you are, you are Pat Beverly with, with the Sean Marion jumper. Give me that. Splash. Dope. Dope. Do you think – who else want – if you got tape, let me know. If not, we're going to uh, we gonna let his run run some more. Do you think A, you can help a senior with no offers? Yes. Because although the coaches aren't going there to see you, they are going there with their eyes. And what they see is what they see. And with the transfer portal, and there's really no deadlines, really no perimeters around it. There's going to be coaches that's going to go and watch whatever AAU tournament you're going to. I'm assuming you're going to go to one where you're going to be able to get seen. And that day, one of their players that they weren't expecting to transfer is. And they need to get somebody else to come in now. And they don't really want to deal with the transfer thing. And if that's the day you have to have a good game, you might have an opportunity. You know, I have a kid. His name is Caleb Clyburn. I coached him down in Montverde. And that, he was uh, – he had a scholarship to the University of Delaware – his coach was about to get fired. No, he had some, some offers. He had a scholarship to Delaware. His coach was about to get fired, but he didn't care. And he went and played for Nike Team Florida in the AAU event because he wanted to get seen some more. Now, it didn't really help him that much, but it did solidify because Delaware called was like, yo, why is Caleb playing in this tournament? And well, he was like, whoa, he hadn't talked to you. No, we want him. You know, and then he get, get, gets up there. They start tripping, but it is what it is. But, Joseph, that was cool, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you sharing that. And hopping in on that. You know, let me know who else y'all will want to see. Um, but yeah, can absolutely help you. Great assessor. Appreciate that, baby. Y'all hit like, man. Hit like, hit share, get some people in here. You know, do the super chat, do the super stickers. Pay. Super chat, super stickers, whatever. Put it in there right now. Can you do a Trey Man breakdown? Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's bring up, let's bring up Trey. Dude, NBA dudes, I like watching full games. All right, so what I'm going to do is this. Is he, on the he on the Hornets now, right? So I don't know how many of y'all know this, but if you go to NBA.com, for those of y'all that want y'all game broken down, click the links. Click the link side of the description. Y'all hit like, y'all hit share. I'm mad we really not on Instagram. 
probably should have went live. I don't know next time. Let me see. Yeah, whatever. And if you go to NBA.com, you click on any box score. This one might not populate. And we go to box score. You see these? These uh, numbers and whatever. Obviously, this is what happened. But if you click it, it does a video for you. Trey Mann did not play tonight. So when's the last game that Trey Mann played? He played March 5th. He had 18 points. So this would be a good game to analyze. He went 7-9. All right. So we can go down here. We go to box score. And we go Trey Mann. And I'm going to look at all his field goals attempted. And what it's going to do is going to bring up a video edit. For That's him. respectable. For With sound and everything. So this is like a phenomenal thing. For those of y'all just want to watch clips, NBA, and you can download them too. So this is a great way for you to be able to watch NBA clips. I don't think I'm going to be able to use the, the controls like on my – no. All right. So let's trade, man. He got the ball. Watch that again. Ball screen. This was a crappy screen. Look at all the space between Miles Bridges and Suggs and Paolo's right there. So he makes the read. He's looking at him, make the read. Step back, boom. Good shot. Another, he gets a switch. Wendell Carter attacks his top foot, immediately reads it. You see how Wendell's top top foot is right there? It's staggered, right? So what he's doing is he knows if I attack his top foot, his hips have to open up. I'll be able to get past him. His shoulders are at Wendell's waist. So even though Wendell is in front of him and it looks like that ball is is contained, he, he's already beat. Now I haven't even seen this play. Got him, got past him, step back up and under, step through. That was a beautiful move. A lot of, a lot of small guards. Y'all need to look at this combo that he just did right here. Look at this. No wasted dribbles. Boom. Tack foot. Boom. Step back, step through. Got it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Y'all don't want to guard an offensive rebound. Small guards, offensive rebounds. You get out to that three-point line. You go to the area of the floor. Let me see if we can go back. Uh, probably not. I don't feel like clicking out. You go to the area of the floor that's unoccupied. Great screen. This is the same play that they ran the first time, right? And this is stuff that when you start watching NBA games, you start picking up. Y'all remember the very first play where they run? Just a simple ball screen. And Wendell Carter looks like he's flat, right? Screen's there. That's not even flat. That's more like a... Short drop, but look at all his space. And as a small guard, you know, if you, you have to be able to hit this shot, it's a great screen by Grant Williams. So Suggs is complete, or they're Anthony Black. He's completely out of the play. Wendell Carter is 6'10. He's giving you that much of a cushion. You got to rise and hit that. And that's when you're doing your individual workouts, you can do that. That's something that's very simple, right? It's a very simple drill. You get you a teammate, he sets a screen for you. You come off, pull up. Somebody else, whoever's rebounding, you have the ball maybe over here and swing it to this dude for a pick and pop situation or have him after he sets the screen dies. That's nothing but three people. Ball handler, three people, two balls. Ball handler, ball screen, come off. Roll guy hitting for the layup or hitting for the pop. That's a very easy drill. That's game simulation. That's a, that's a shot every guard has to be able to hit. Now he's looking. He's looking at the offense, looking at the coach. Nick Richards, floater, got it. Another, another shot. Guards got to be able to hit. Small guards. Float game. Float game. Wish somebody would have really taught me that. Float game. I love how he sets this up on this screen. He's going to do a C dribble to lock this foot and to be able to give Nick Richards some time to set it. Boom, look. He made him stumble. He should have sprinted off. He should have sprinted off and came downhill hard and made Wendell commit. But he waited, waited. He's reading to see if the lob's there. Kind of got Gary Harris in jail just a little bit. Gary try to come up top. He's late. Floater. Another step up screen. Come back. Twist. Reverse. Boom. That was great. I want y'all to watch how he navigate this. this first screen, and he gets he gets the switch. This is called twist. It's re-screen. So Nick Richards set that screen at first. 
right there. That's the first screen. He's going to come back around, twist it. Second screen. Now Suggs is already off balance. And look at them. They're both on this side of the screen. So that means that as soon as he comes off, he knows that he has a lane. What you want to always do as a ball handler, you want to get two defenders on you at once. The moment you do that, now the defense is out of whack. They're out of their rotations. One of your teammates is going to be open. That's what he has. He has two guys paying attention to him, guarding him at once on this side. Comes off, does a retreat dribble just a little bit to make him lunge forward. And, he has, and you look at their feet. feet. Nick Richards is going to almost trip him. Come off, boom, quick floater. Snatch. Has he? Didn't really read it, just choreographed it. That's horrible defense. That's horrible defense. Look, has he? And Cole Anthony's there. Cole Anthony could have slid and met him there. You're looking. And Paolo, you, you should be here. You, you should at least be to that block. Even though Brandon Miller is a great shooter, I would love for you to be right here just to create the illusion that if you come downhill, I'm going to be able to get to that and block that. He spins, opens up. Franz is way too – I'm sorry, Mo is way too slow. And Paolo, now that you're looking at him dead on, this should be a confrontation at, at the rim. He should be blocking this, make Cole slide to Brad Miller, make Joe slide to Miles Bridges, make – is this Mo? Yeah, Mo or Franz. Mo, Mo, you're going to have responsibility of two. I would rather have Davis Bertans get it off Paolo coming over, stopping. Man hits Miller, then Miller hits Bertans, and he's hitting this and we in scramble mode as opposed to giving up a wide open layup. That's just that's bad defense. It's bad defense. Another step up, twist. Attacking a slower guy and one. I like he plays with confidence. I like he changes pace. You see, you hear Joe Ingles. You can't hear, but you see Joe Ingles is calling out the ball screen coverage. The screen is on the left, so he rejects it, and he gets a little slight twist anyway. Looks like he set a fish hook screen, did he? Did Berton set a fish hook? Yep, a little bit. Come off, body into him. Want to get your body into shot blockers? Take their ability to block your shot away. And that's it. So, like I said, if 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 you do that, you know, you're able to see all these guys and you can watch whoever on NBA.com. What's your advice to young coach looking for their first job? The best piece of coaching job advice I've ever gotten. The best piece. I'm not, before I tell y'all that, hit like. Hit share, send this to your email list, share this to your Facebook, share this to somebody you know that's a hooper. Y'all buy a super chat, buy a super sticker. There's a dollar sign at the bottom. But in the comments, do that. And make sure that y'all visit the website, man. Group 82 Basketball backslash services. Make sure that y'all visit. Get in here. You know, what other services do y'all need? All this stuff. Let me know. And for those of y'all that are serious hoopers, do it. Like, you get your jump shot analyzed. You get your game analyzed. Your one-on-one -on -one session with me. You get this. Like, you buy the package, you get this right here, but it's in a much more deeper detail. And all this stuff can be paid with Afterpay. Afterpay breaks it up into four payments, eight payments, ten payments. Like they make, can make it really cheap for you, and you get everything today. So go ahead and do that. But what's your advice to young coaches looking for their first job? Best piece of coaching job advice I ever got was always be around talent. When you're around talent, you'll always have a job. Best piece of advice I ever got because it's so true. Because as a coach, no one understands your intellectual basketball capital. There's no way to measure that. There's no SAT. There's no basketball aptitude test. There's none of that. So there's no way to truly measure if this guy knows what he's talking about or not. But if he's around talent, you know at the end of the day, I know he can get talent. And at the end of the day, no matter how, what you know about X's and O's, no matter what you know about the game of basketball, no matter what you know about human psychology, human behavior, if you do not have talent, you're not going to be able to win. 
So if you always get around talent, you're a young coach, someone's always going to want to have you on staff because you can attract really good players. So that's the best piece of advice I ever got, and that's how I got on. I didn't, I didn't have talent at Montverde. Like, that's not what got me the job. My work ethic got in there. But once I got attached to Montverde, I was at Montverde, and Montverde got all the talent. So that allowed me to go to the next level. Hey, Coach, what's the biggest thing coaches look for an undersized guard? When you are handling the ball, I need to feel comfortable. I need to feel comfortable you're going to take care of the ball. I need to feel comfortable that the ball is safe. I need to feel comfortable it's not going to get lost. It's not going to get poked away. You're not going to turn it over. I need to feel comfortable that if you get trapped coming off a ball screen, you're going to make a good pass. I need to, I need to be comfortable that you're going to be comfortable because you have so much confidence in your handles. You've worked on your handles so much. You read the game at such a high level. You're not going to make mistakes with the ball. That's the first thing for an undersized guard. Second thing is you got to be able to shoot. Because you getting baskets amongst the trees, I, can't, I ain't saying it can't happen, but that ain't really how you're going to get your money, right? We're going to recruit guys that are 6'10". If you're in the high school, college level, you in the NBA, we're going to draft. Well, small guard, something about right now. You know, we're going to recruit tall guys. You're not tall, so you need to be able to shoot an exceptionally high level. You need to be able to hit free throws an exceptionally high level because I know if you can handle the ball and you can hit free throws, I can have you in the game late. You're going to take care of the ball. You get foul, you're going to knock it down. Another thing you got to be able to do, you got to be able to defend an exceptionally high level. You need to be in great shape and be able to defend 94 feet. If you are in phenomenal shape, you can defend 94 feet. You're going to take care of the ball. You hit open jump shots. You hit your free throws. There is not a team that I can think of with a smart coach at the high school or college level that is not going to want you to be on his team. And then at that point, whatever you add, let's say you do add interior finishes. Let's say that you go to the court every day and you do just 100 layups, just, you know, you just throw it off of different spots, the backboard, you just standing up under there, 100 with the right, 100 with the left, Euros, you know, uh, reverses, like if you do these things, you get comfortable with hitting layups as often as you possibly can, you know, that's, that's going to really help you, right? Hitting layups is a skill that's needed at every level, at every size. Kyrie is an expert at hitting layups. Steph Curry is an expert at hitting layups. Now, that's something that you need to work on. That's something that no matter, there's all these courts out here. You can grab your ball and go anywhere and just hit layups for hours. No one's going to stop you. So, you know, that's something that's, that I would really focus on. So hitting layups, shooting, hitting free throws, having an amazing handle, high basketball IQ, taking care of the ball, being in amazing shape, guarding guys 94 feet. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. When it's live, sit on the channel afterwards. It will. It will. Yep. Breakdown, Rob Wright from Mount Vert. Let me see. We got to go back to that game. So I'll, I'll show y'all what I was actually doing. We was watching that Mount Vert game. And now just like how you shift the lens for when you're scouting someone else, right? For those of y'all that want to learn how to scout, I would really go book a one-on-one. -on -one. I would go book a package with me and tell me that. And what we can do as far as like, instead of watching film of somebody else, you know, what we could do is we can analyze, I'm sorry, instead of watching film of you, we can analyze film together. And I'll really teach you how to scout because this is a skill that, once you know how to scout, bro, you're going to be able to get any job you want to. You've got to be able to show it. All right, so Robert Wright, we're in the middle of the game. This is him right here. He's going to Baylor. So now I'm watching him, and I'm seeing where he's at, and I'm no longer scouting Cooper Flag. This is stuff that I do live, right? When I go to games and I'm watching, I'm focused on one player. Or if I'm watching the team, see what sets they're running, and I'll, I'll swap. I'll go from player to player, especially like when I was at Montverde and we would be scouting games like this, right? Who are we going to play next in the tournament? Even though this, this is a championship game, 
who we gonna play next in the tournament that we're in. You know, whether it was the Island Classic or City of Palms or even the Mate. You know, I would go and I would scout and I would try to get a personnel report on these five guys. So I had to make sure I was watching all of them kind of at the same time and giving them their own individual moments. Let me make it bigger. So we're looking at Rob right now. At, at this point, let's go back. When AJ gets, gets here, okay, I would love for Rob to be like right here. Um, I would love for him to come in a little bit because AJ is such a good driver. I love that Liam's stunning, but you, once again, defense is about creating the illusion that those gaps aren't there, right? This is AJ DeBonsa. This is the best player in all high school basketball. We need to create illusion. We need to shrink this gap. We need to shrink these gaps over here. Like, Asa, can you be up a little bit? Can you be up a little bit and get your arm out, right, just to shrink the gap, shrink the floor to make them think that there's no possibility for you to hit any of these gaps, so I love for Robert Wright to be over a little bit more. Ball screen, he's up the line. Back door. See, now this is a hard denial. Now, if now I don't I don't like what Rob did, did here. Ball screen. Now at this point, Rob, he should have his forearm into Deuce's chest. The ball is over here, it's being trapped. You're the next logical pass. Obviously, AJ's looking to go back door with it. If it's there, you need to be making contact with the defender right now. Forearm to his chest, forearm to his stomach, deny, shrink it, cover him. This is like a defensive back and the ball is in the air. Boom. This, it should be contact. My teams, we're going to play legally physical, right? These are the four pillars for my coaching philosophies. Number one, building patriarchs through the game of basketball. Number two, we're going to be the smartest team in the NBA. Number three, play legally physical. Number four, protect our business partners. For pillar number three, you need to be legally physical, right? At this point, there's no ref is going to get you for putting a forearm right to his chest. But what that does when you put a forearm to his chest and you try to go back door in the first quarter, now he's thinking about it like, oh, this is how we play it. Yeah, this is how we play it. So now he's going to have just a little bit more reluctance to try to cut back door as opposed to if you don't put a forearm to his chest like Robert Wright didn't do right here. If you had a form in his chest, you're in hard denial. This option isn't even there. But he, he was open. And Cooper Flat rips AJ again. I didn't realize Cooper ripped AJ twice. Oh, that was the same one as before. Let me, he ripped him once. Great. See, I don't, I don't like that, Robert. I don't like that. This is trap. It's you and the sideline. You got three defenders. You got Derek Queen, you got yourself, and you got the sideline. You should not be beat. What, what did he do? Did y'all see that? Did y'all see what he did? If you're not, I'm, I'm about to show you. Watch. Watch his hand. He's going to reach right here. He's going to try to get in this little gap right here once he sees the ball. Boom. Reaches. Now your hand's on his back, this hip. Now you're gone. This foot's getting attacked. So what we really want to do is try to get an angle where he's cutting him off probably at the like this dot or this S or this T, but he can't just play and catch up. And that's Z drill. You know, that's every high school basketball team, every middle school basketball team should be doing Z drill. He's doing that, but. A lot of down screens, pressure. Rob Wright getting some plays off. Good shot, Tyran. Run the play. He already had the play called. I love that. So that you know what that tells me? That tells me that he was thinking about it as the shot was in there. He already knew. Once his ball is about to get taken out, he's looking at his team. He already knows what play that, that, that he's going to call. Kevin Boyle said it too. Patient. Was he shot ready? What y'all think? I think when, when he cut through, he was putting his mind on, I'm going to get to the corner, just get out the way. This doesn't look like a guy that wants to be involved in this possession offensively or who is looking to score. This looks like a guy is trying to get out the way because, once again, this high-low pass from Derek Queen to Asa, which is wide open. I don't know why you aren't making this pass. There we go. Gets it. Trap. 
Now, look, what I just tell y'all, small guards, uh, offensive rebounds, or even situations like this where the defense is collapsed, you got three defenders on the ball, get to the unoccupied area of the floor. If Robert Wright truly wanted to score, he would get right here at this wing. Because this spacing he has right now with Cooper Flag is just entirely too close. If he wanted to shoot, I would even come back here, right? So that way I know I'm going to get a wide open shot because I'm like two or three feet off the three-point line. He gets the ball on a, on a bailout, drops down and gets shot ready on the catch. I love that he does that. But mentally he was not shot ready because he was standing up here, walking up here, didn't sprint to the spot, and that contributes to that shot missing. You know, if you're a small guard, man, you are a release valve at all times. You got to be ready to shoot. You got to be ready to shoot. Guys have to be comfortable in knowing at any given time, if there's pressure on me, I know my point guard is going to bail me out where he's at. Where is he? Where is he? You have to give the entire team a sense of comfort. Again, now, now he's shot ready. Bad pass. Got in the paint, teeth the defense step through, drew a foul. Smart. That don't count. But I love that he, that he did that. Look, so as Liam comes off his dribble handoff with Derek, look at, look at Rob. I'm shot ready. I got my hands up. I'm loaded. I'm active. Liam hits him, throws a horrible pass. Boom. I'm getting physical. Drawing fouls. I'm at home. Y'all going to give me the whistle. He's going to be a great college guard. I would love to see him stay somewhere for four years, particularly at one, at one school, him stay at Baylor, and just consistently build his reputation and be like that consummate leader, that, you know, preseason Big 12 player of the year going to his senior year, even might be a defensive player of the year type guy, one of the dudes that represents the university well. Uh, he can make his name at Baylor as somebody that's a legend down there, you know, because he, he has that. Because right now he's not an NBA player. But he can go to Baylor and prove that I'm in shape. I can guard 94 feet. I can shoot. I hit free throws. I'm going to take care of the, of the ball. And him going to Montverde is going to help him tremendously being attached to that. That's a brand that helps you. Get the ball up, big fella. It's a horrible shot. With 18 seconds, 17 seconds left on the shot clock. It's a bad shot, Derek. Team's too good. What questions y'all got? I want to make sure I'm not missing out on y'all. Take that down. Need to see this guy on a team roster or a team photo. Google's free. And if you don't believe me, you know, the Lord is working with me. But you can take it. You can shove it. For real. Because don't really care, brother. Who you think is better, Cooper or Ace? Ace. Ace is, Ace is a better player. You know, Cooper... He understands team basketball. Cooper's a much better defender. Ace's defense sucks. You know, I, I did a scout report on both of them. But Coop is a much better defender. But as far as offense, Ace is awesome. Ace is awesome. How much should you lift weekly? And with that, should you focus more on skill or getting bigger and faster? Um, I, I think lifting is, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis. I really think if you do push-ups, like, can you do 50 push-ups in a row? Well, I did 50 push-ups in a row last night. Can you do 50 push-ups? If you can do 50 push-ups in a row, you have enough strength at the basketball level that you'll be all right. How long can you hold your plank for? That's your core. Can you do 100 body squats going as far down as you possibly can? I think getting that muscular endurance is a lot more important, especially for younger players. Then you start adding weight lifting and all that stuff because as a basketball player, especially young ones, it's like a young man's sport. Well, it is a young man's sport. You're growing so much. Your muscles are changing so much. So many of y'all have so many different heights and lengths and athleticism. I'm saying not lengths and athleticism, but length, wingspan. You know, you have so many things going on with your body that when you start lifting, I feel like it's not, you're not really able to keep up with it or it might mess you up psychologically. And I ain't saying don't lift. If you enjoy lifting, do it. But I feel like for a lot of players, if you can really do push-ups, if you can really hold that plank, right, you can really do body squats, that's going to give you the, the foundations you need for your strength. And then you can start lifting weights to compound on that. 
Who is Cooper Flag's best comparison? I think right now it's Andre Karolinko. Um, but even him, uh, he was able to create for himself defensively. You know, this young man right here is saying that Cooper feels like he's going to be a glue guy. That's how I look at him, too. Like, I don't really see Cooper being this generational prospect. Like, I just – I don't see that. Like, I, I see a guy that is doing what athletic, long guys do in high school, and I just feel like he's going to be more of a glue guy when he gets to the NBA. And you don't draft guys number one overall to be, to be glue guys. So, you know, I hope they start getting him a more realistic analysis than what they've been, they've been showing. Good shot. Cooper's still doing that. It's something I put in my Cooper flag right now. Still doing it. Look at the shot fake, right? On the shot fake, what he's going to do, he's going to move his foot back. And no one shoots like that. Look. Foot, foot's back. Like, if Tyran Stokes, if see at at the high school level, this is a guy that 6'5, 6'6, Tyran Stokes, doesn't have great lateral quickness, doesn't have great length. You know, this is a guy that with that weak shot fake, he'll be able to blow past. When he gets to Duke, there's gonna be a few guys gonna be a little bit bigger, gonna be able to cut this off. When he gets to the NBA, this is gonna be nothing. This is gonna be contained. So it's going to be like it didn't even happen. He has to get a much better shot fake. He has to stop that because it's an easy tell. If Cooper moves his foot back on the shot fake, he's going left. Easy. Got there and barely got past him, got bailed out with the ref. So that's what I'm saying. It's stuff like that. And I said this inside that scout report. If you haven't seen the Cooper Flag scout report, it's linked in the description. Go watch that. His scout report, Ace Bedley scout report, Cameron Booster scout report, AJ DeBonson scout report. Dylan Harper scout report, coincidentally the top five guys in the Naismith first team All-American. Robert Wright stunted here. So what a stun is, for those y'all ain't paying attention, so Robert Wright's up the line a little bit, right? He knows the ball screen's probably going to come. He can see his man. He can see the ball. And what he's going to do, he's going to stunt. So he's going to fake and act like he's going to come in and try to take Tyran Stokes dribble away. But what he's really doing is just shrinking the gap to make him think about it, to hesitate. Watch the stunt. Stunt, two-way stunt, gets back. He was expecting like a travel or something like that, but they called a, called a foul. Well, they promote this 21 Savage, ain't they? Ball screen, shot. See, AJ, AJ got to be able to hit that. This is boom, boom, right, right there. I mean, I'm at, at the NBA level. Go up, right there. Go up, go up. Because this is high school that's 19 9. That looks like to probably be, you know, six feet. That's 25 feet rise. You know, him coming all the way here and sliding. Look at his body weight, right? You look at his body weight. He's leaning back. He's on the balls of his feet, which is great, but he's leaning back. Shrunk his gap with Derek Queen. He just made the shot a lot more difficult. Now this is a, a contested three where, you know, he was leaning back. I love the fact he's able to get straight up and down. Shows how athletic he is. But I'd rather him just been here and just pull that, you know. Because Derrick Queen probably hit him a little bit, but you're not going to get that. Not in a place. Good rebound, Cooper. Robert right up top, wide open, shot ready. Got to gotta pull it. Got to pull it. Got to pull it. You know, that was over the back. They're not going to call that. Boom. I, I hate that Robert Wright do, did that. Look, the ball's right here with, with Cooper. Robert Wright 
Get shot ready. You got the space. Cooper drives. The pass is here. Like that, that has to go up. Now, this is a shot since a small guard. That has to go up. That has to go up at every level. That has to go up. If a coach doesn't let you shoot that as a small guard, you need to get on another team. Because for some reason, he doesn't believe in your jump shot. That's a, there is, he isn't going to get a more wide open look than that. Has to go up. But he's so focused on getting his teammates involved, which I ain't mad at him. But you gave up that shot. You, had a, you gave up a wide open three for a contested three. And that's something that I would tell him as a, as a coach. Like, Robert, which is, the, which is the better shot for us, right? You right here, wide open, with no one within seven feet of you, or kick it out to, to your teammate, and he has a shot fake, sidestep, and has the number one player in the country sprinting at him. You know, and even though he has an open shot, no one was even coming close to you. Which is the better shot, Robert? Which one? You know, that stuff as a point guard, you got to be able to read, you got to be able to see. I think Tyran Sosa is playing out of position at Prolific Prep. I love to see him off the ball more. He's not a natural point guard. It's not what he want to do. They're running no weak side action whatsoever. And it, Mount Verde's defense is just allowed to just stay and just it's, – it's like a zone at this point. Like, when I mean weak side, like, these, these two guys, like, can y'all exchange two? Can you go set a screen on Robert White, get zero out? Can you go set a back screen on him and get that going? Like, can y'all run some sort of twirl action? Why is there nothing going on on the weak side? Because what this allows Austin Newell to do and Robert Wright is just sit there. And, and look at these gaps. Remember we talked about before, you want to shrink gaps, right? These gaps aren't being shrunken. Where can Tyran Stokes drive? Every gap is occupied with a help position, and you got arguably the best shot blocker in all of high school basketball who isn't being preoccupied at all as well. And these guys are over here listening to their coach in the middle of a, of a possession, so he's yelling out something. So, you know, this is a team that just wasn't really well prepared for this game, in my personal opinion. Look, it's easy. Didn't even need to reach in, didn't even need to foul. And Derek Queen, it's the second time you done did that. That's what Cooper's telling him, too. I love, I love the fact. That's the stuff I'm paying attention to and I'm scouting, too. Look, Cooper's looking at Derek Queen and telling him, watch, look, just, just put your hands up. Just put your hands up. That's, that's leadership. I love that. And Duke's going to ask for more of that from him. Sometimes you watch free throws and get a look at their shooting form. Shot looks pretty good. Robert Wright. Looks like they already called the play. Boy already called the play. And Robert Wright's playing it right here in Mount Vernon. I mean, he got four high major recruits with him. So we gotta make sure he gets all of them involved. But that see, that's, that's a bad shot, brother. That's a so so you pass up this wide open three last possession. And you shoot this as the midget point guard that you are, ball screen come off, boom. You need to either be hitting Cooper. Cooper actually needs to be spread, scoot over a little bit. Hit Cooper for that three, and look at him. He's saying the pass and the ball. But, no, you turn the corner, pick it up, and you go to the trees. That, that should have been a kick out to number three. Or that should have been a lob because you got two offensive rebounders on this side because you know the defense is drawing you in. This is something small guards need to also understand. When you going up and you shooting, when you come into the paint, it's like when I was playing D-line and I got in the backfield. When I saw the ball or I saw the quarterback, like, it's lunchtime. This is the whole reason I do everything. This is why I practice. This is why I lift. This is why I go through all these drills. This is why I went through two-a-days. This is why I do ladder drills. This is why I let the coach grab my face mask and yell at me. So when I get in the backfield and that quarterback's right there, it's, it's lunchtime. This is the exact same way that shot blockers feel about a small guard. When you get in the paint, it's lunchtime. They all want to block your shot. So what you should know, since they all want to block your shot, if you throw it over their arms, because ain't none of them jumping up here, except for Victor, ain't none of them jumping up here. If you throw it over the rim, Asa Newell, that's a dunk. Derek Queen, that's a dunk. 
for both of them. They might fight over it in such a wide open dunk. What do you do? Get smacked out of bounds. Stayed in bounds. Gets it back. Now he's scared to shoot. Looking for Derrick Queen. Good pass, Coop. Right open. And one. So, Robert Wright solid, but it is what it is. Media never learns from mistakes from hype prospects. The media get, I mean, they make so much money. Hyping up the next basketball star makes so much money. Makes so much money. Cooper going to be 18, 8, 6 with two steals and a block. I, I don't see him getting anywhere close to those stats. I really don't. I don't think he scores good enough to average 18. Kobe pump face like he's shooting the ball. Exactly. Being from Baltimore, opinions on Derrick Queen. He's a great – he's going to be a great college player. Great big, soft hands. Uh, whatever school he goes to, they're going to have to have patience with him. They're going to have to always include him. They're going to have to want to get the ball to him. Um, I haven't – I don't want to make the comparison like they play alike, but just kind of like how Armando Baycott has fit in with Carolina, how they make sure that he's always included in everything, even how they recruit and who they surround him with. I would do the same thing with Derrick Queen. If you're looking for a high-flying dunker spot, dominant, big, that's going to eventually step out and start hitting threes, I, I don't think that that's how you should treat him. I think you need to treat him like he is. He is a – he's like Zach Randolph to a degree, you know, kind of like that. Like, you know, and if he gets a mid-range jump shot, he gets a three-pointer, great. But, you know, Derrick, do what you do best, which is offensive rebound and score around the rim because – you know, three-pointers and layups is what everybody's focused on at this point anyway. At a top five nascent fall Americans, who would be your one through five in your order? Um, number five is Cameron Boozer. Number four is Cooper Flagg. Number three is Dylan. If I'm basing it off potential, nah. Number three, damn. Number three, Ace is not a good defender. Dylan is a great defender. And I feel like Dylan is more ready. So I'm going to put Ace three. Dylan two and A.J. DeBonso one. Now, Ace is like, he is just – Basketball IQ, game film, advanced scouting, knowledge away from being an elite player. Like he's right there, you know. But Dylan, Dylan is is nice. Dylan real nice. Naptown was good, baby. It's a short video was posted in the middle of the season. Put post it. And let me know what to type in. Hey coach, do you mind breaking out Andre Stoyakovich? That Peja son? Nah, he's not good. I don't like him. Thoughts on reclassing down and staying back a grade. Uh, the older you are, um, the more opportunities that you're going to get. The older you are, the more of a physical advantage you're going to have. The older you are, more likely than not, more of a height advantage you're going to have. The mat, reclassing isn't going to give you some boost. It's not like steroids. What reclassing does is it gives you a little bit more time. But you still got to put in the work, right? Like for me. Like, when I was in sixth grade, I was 11, I was one of the best sixth graders in our township. I definitely was the best sixth grader in our school. I was playing, but everyone else was older than me, right? Because I came from Dayton, Ohio, where we played basketball all the time. And my birthday is in August. So, like, I started middle school, sixth grade. I had just turned 11. So, I was basically still 10. And I'm in middle school with dudes who are 12 about to turn 13, like, in, in the sixth grade. So the best player at another one of our schools, Eastwood, his name is Buki, you know, he was 13, I was 11. That's a massive difference in age. That's a massive difference in growth and all those things. And so had I reclassified and went down to fifth grade or fourth grade, if I would have went to fourth grade, I would have been who Buki was in sixth grade. And me in fourth grade, how I was in sixth grade, I would have been a Division I prospect. You know, but that's not how it was back then. But so I, I say that as it will give you an advantage because it will give you on better AAU teams and more people will, will invest in you because no one cares how old basketball players are. 
They care if you are good at that level that you're playing. They do not care about age. They don't, especially more so now. It used to be when people were drafting clearly just off of potential, then the, you wanted the prospect younger. But now, if he is he ready to play? Can he play? You know, so if you have a – if you see yourself getting better, you're putting in work every single day, you go into the gym for an hour, hour and a half, two hours a day, and you see yourself really getting better and – you don't mind staying in, excuse me, staying in school that extra year or whatever it is. I will reclass. I think I will do a breakdown. Brandon McCoy is still kind of young, but I want to watch, watch more. Just type in Elijah Sanders basketball. Bet. Elijah Sanders basketball. Cool. Before I do that, y'all hit like, hit share. Click this link right here. For those y'all watching the replay, y'all can hit like, hit share, and all that too. This you right here? I mean, you like a massive. Which one is you, nigga? Sorry, Lord. <laughs> it's like, which one? Are you you Brian Scalabrini or you know, look like you playing all American? Which one are you? Light skin. The Brian Scalabrini? All right, bet. That's a mixtape. 340. U.S. San Diego State. You playing at San Diego State? Black jersey. Okay, cool. Got you. This one. All right, bet. You said a short one minute bet. Y'all just raggedy. Oh, you got bounce. You hanging on the rim? Give me that. That was a weak drive by that dude, though. Cool. Can, can you shoot? Can you dribble? I see block shots. I see rebounds. I see post. You don't look that comfortable dribbling the ball. Yeah, you're not comfortable dribbling the ball. What year are you? I will really work on my ball handling if I was you. Yeah, you dribble like you like you scared of it. You like an athletic dude that can't dribble yet, you know. And and what you got a chance to be, um, so you so you a sophomore, so you in high school in Marshall Christian Academy, twenty twelve four and a half blocks. Dribbling like that, you're averaging twenty and twelve. I'm assuming that 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 your competition sucks. So you know, if I were, if I was you, man, what I would do, I would work on my ball handling. Like there's that, that's a skill in basketball that you can never be too good at, right? You, you kind of look like Mikael Bridges. And M Mikael Bridges has a documentary on NBA. I'm about to find it. I think it's his past to rock. If I'm not mistaken. I think this might be it. Well, YouTube getting his ad money now, ain't they? Shout out to Dorian Finney Smith. Ain't too many Dorians out here doing great things. But the Florida made it to the league. I'm putting on, dog. Yeah, this it. Um, I want you to watch this. Elijah, you know, because cause you, you remind me of him. You remind me of a girl that I, sorry. But you, you remind me of him. You know, you remind me of Mikael Bridges. He talked about, like, 
how when he was younger, he wasn't that good yet, but people could see it. And if you watch how Mikel Bridges plays and how he moves, you know, he had the red shirt his first year at Villanova. A lot of people don't know that. You know, he had the red shirt his first year at Villanova. So they went on, I think, and they won a national championship. And he was a red shirt. He didn't get a chance to play. So for you, if I was you, I literally would work on my ball handling for 15 to 20 minutes a day, every day. I would not miss a day. Especially it's about to be warm outside, like even just grabbing the ball, just going dribbling around the neighborhood for a mile, two miles, listen to a podcast, listen to audio books, listen to my videos, listen to music. Just be you should you should at least have a ball in your hands for an hour and a half a day. I'm not talking about you're at the gym for an hour and a half. I'm sorry, not an hour and a half, I'm sorry. 20, 20 minutes a day. I'm not talking about you were at the gym for an hour and a half and you touched it for 20 minutes. Like, I mean that you should really get comfortable dribbling every single day because that's a skill that if you don't do it, you're never going to get it. And if you don't keep doing it, you're going to lose it. Just like shooting, right? Like, I can still shoot, but I can't shoot like how when I was shooting every single day. You know, so ball handling for you is going to be crucial because – if you stop growing, you're shorter than LeBron. You're shorter than Paul George. You're shorter than Kawhi. You know, let's go back and put you up on the, on the screen, not Mikhail's mother. Nothing bad about her. But you 6'6". Six, six. I mean, like, if you, if, if you stop, man, you know what I mean? 6'6 six, six dudes that could hoop. It's just like out here now, just doing nothing. Six six ain't tall, dude. That's nothing. I mean, Lamelo taller than you. Look how he dribbles. You got to get your handles right. And there's so many workouts. Phil Handy has great ball handling workouts. That is just gonna be you if you got a garage, getting busy in that garage. You got a driveway. Like you don't need to shoot to get your ball handling. You don't need a whole court to get your ball handling. You don't need, it don't need to be perfect conditions to get your ball handling. You know, sometimes you might not be able to get shots up for whatever reason. I think you need to be getting shots up all the time. You average 20, you average 12, you average four and a half blocks. You know, your, your coach needs to have the gym open to you at all times, but you need to get your ball handling right and you need to become a knockdown shooter because it's 6'6". Six, six, I mean, bro, like you literally might be a point guard. That might happen if you want your career to extend but if you just want to keep these post skills and, like, the level that you're at, right, like, you're going to be a Division II player. Maybe D3. But if you get ball handling, you get jump shot, I mean, you can go to NBA. That's where you're at as a sophomore. This is a big, this is a big next six months for you. You know, if I was you, I would just be in the gym. I'd be working on ball handling. I'll be doing push-ups. I'll be doing planks. I'll be jump roping. I'll be playing as much as, as I can. I'll be hitting 100 shots a day, 200 shots a day, 300 shots a day. I will be trying to find Division I runs with dudes. I don't know what hometown you in, Marshall Christian Academy. I don't know where that's at. But if I was you, I'll be trying to find runs with college players. I'll be trying to find runs with pros. Like, I'll be trying to get smoked. Because if, if you're doing that, like, right now with the skill set from what I saw, 2012, four and a half, if you come back next year and you are a for real player, bro, you'd be averaging 40 and 20 on these dudes with, with nine blocks. You need to be one of them dudes that when you get to the NBA, people will be like, man, he averaged 40, 22 rebounds and 12 blocks. It's just going to sound crazy because it looks like the competition that you're playing is trash. That's the type of player that you can get to. Like, you got to be able – you got to snatch dude's throats out. Pause. You got to be angry, too. You know, you 6'6". You can be a lockdown defender. So, study all that. Watch that. You got a chance. You can take clips from England. I'll take clips from anywhere. Do coaches care about mixtapes? Uh, I think every coach is different. For me, I want full game. Because full game, I, I get to really see, like, when you chilling – when you rest in, like the stuff I was just talking about with Cooper, like I got to, I got to see his leadership. He does that a lot. You know, like there's little things you can pick up on when you're watching full games as opposed to when you're watching highlights and all that. So, you know, for me, I'm, a, I'm about full games.
Y'all hit like, hit share. Who else in here? Brandon McCoy, you know, let's, let's watch him. Let's watch him. Let's watch Brandon McCoy. You remind me of a girl that I once knew. I hate these camera angles. This is actually... I'm not, I'm gonna keep it a buck and y'all gonna see. This is actually the first time that I've ever seen this kid play at a high level. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go watch a highlight. I want, I want like, like the mixtape because I wanna, I want y'all to see what I look at when I see like an elite prospect for the very first time. See, 12 minutes. I am not, I'm not with that. This is six years ago. That ain't gonna do nothing. This is eight. This is a different dude too. I've already been a Brandon McCoy basketball guy. I don't want to look at the Kyrie Irving one. All right, let's go here. Doesn't look like he got crazy bounce. I miss the era when they used to just have the mixtapes. I love this stuff, but like I said, I'd rather see the mixtapes or the full uh, full games. Let me go back, check some of y'all questions. Y'all got questions? No? What's the Ayalani Classic? I coached in this. I don't know if that's a gym. Yeah, yeah, it is. It sure is. We played Oak Hill there and lost. We had Quinn Cook, A.J. Hammonds, uh, Kyle Hornsby, Bruce Hornsby. Or I think Bruce Hornsby was his dad. Ben McLemore, Jordan Adams. They had a squad. Had three pros. Oh, he he's not freakishly athletic, and this Ayalani team sucks. Like they're they're this they're like for those of y'all that watch the Maui Invitational, this is the Shamanai, literally. Like they they get in the tournament with all these elite players because the Ayalani Classic is one of the Nike high school tournaments that's been going on for a long time. It's one of their, like, flagship staple events for their high school basketball division. Like, every school in that tournament is a Nike school, and they fly the whole team down there. They fly the whole team. They fly the staff. They put us up in this really nice hotel. They gave us so much money for meals. Like, you know, the Iolani Classic took care of everything. And this was – I was at Montverde. We played the Iolani Classic in 2010. So you're talking almost 15 years ago. So it's definitely went up since then. So, you know, this tournament is one of those things is when you have a team that goes to that, you know, y'all have a really good player or your program is the real deal. And Ayalani, since they're the host, they get to be in it and they get their teeth kicked in. And it's crazy, too, because, like, you see all these people? It's like their peace jam. This is their, this is their peace jam on Hawaii, in Honolulu. And, and these people never get off the island. So the girls, like the girls is straight groupies. Like they was hanging around our bus. They was hanging around our hotel. Like we had to like tell these dudes, it, cause we, it, it got to the point, I gotta pause this. I want y'all to hear what, I, what I'm saying. This is, this is facts, nigga, sorry. This is facts. Like we had to remind, we had to tell the dudes that, cause we knew like as a coaching staff, like we're not gonna be able to stop them. Cause it was too many. We had to tell them, like, the only reason these girls is into you because they're trying to get off this island. That's it. That's the only reason they're into you because she's trying to get off this island. This is Hawaii. 
She can't hop in a car and drive to the next state. She's in Hawaii. All she's trying to do is get pregnant by you because you might go to the NBA, is what she's thinking, to get off this island. Did they listen? No. And that, that team, that team that went there, that team that didn't listen, and my verb, that, that team was put together. It was like a transfer team. We, like that roster got put together, and it was just too many different types of people. It just wasn't, wasn't su- successful at all. What? Teams will cancel practice to let local players go watch games. Really? Wow. In your opinion, what are the separating factors between a pro who excels at their level and a pro who doesn't? I, Jason, this is a phenomenal question, bro. I, I think the, the factors for pros that really get busy, it's the mental, right? They, they understand what this means. They understand what this is about. Like, they understand that they are playing in the best basketball league in the world, and they have a finite time. And they dedicate themselves to that. They don't take it for granted. They get their sleep. They get their nutrition. They do, they do the strength and conditioning. They work on individual skills. They watch film. They train. They study the game. They have their personal life taken care of. They have a wife or a very serious woman in their life. They have a family. They have a spiritual foundation. They understand how to protect their business partners. They understand what can be said to the media and what needs to be said to the media and how they're going to perform for the media, and they understand what they're not going to do. They know the other team's plays better than their own plays. They understand that the NBA is one of the best marketing platforms that exist on planet Earth. There ain't too many platforms that tell stories better than National Basketball Association. And great players, great pros, they want that. They understand that. And they use it to change whatever it is that they want to change and to acquire whatever it is they want to acquire. And when you do that, the decisions make sense. The sacrifice makes sense. The discipline makes sense. It makes sense when you do all that. But when you don't have something deeper pulling you, you know, having every time you do something that ends up on social media and people making up lies and people making up stories and you get this fame and you might not want fame and you got all this money and, you know, people think having money is a, is a problem solver. Having money is a problem creator. There's not a single person on earth who got money and they didn't create more and that money didn't come with more problems. You got to choose to sign up for them problems. And you say you would sign up for them problems until you actually get them problems and you realize them problems ain't going to go away and they get bigger with bigger stakes. How much can you stomach? These are questions that have to be answered. And to be an elite pro, you got to understand these things. And you got to see where you fit in inside the NBA story, the NBA system. And you play that role. Until your physical talent says, hey, we can't do this no more. But if you did everything right when you had the physical, that means you also developed the mental. And then the mental goes to the intellectual. And now you got this intellectual basketball capital, and this don't go nowhere. It's the reason Pat Riley is still doing what he's doing. He played in the NBA. He played in Kentucky. He played in the NBA. And he coached the Lakers as an assistant. Then became a head coach of the Lakers and showtimed it. He played the character. Y'all go back and study Pat Riley for the young NBA fans. Y'all go back and study what he did. He was a character. He understood. This is showtime. Got out of there in the 90s, went to the Knicks. Looked like a mob boss. Because it's New York. With with one of the meanest, nastiest teams that's ever existed in the NBA. A team that I despise because I'm a massive Michael Jordan, Chicago Bulls fan, 90s Bulls fan, massive 90s Bulls fan. Despised the Knicks, but man, shh, you, you respected them. They were a tough team. They flake out, he go down to Miami, and he's, you know, he poppy. 
Pat Riley got 10% equity stake because he elevated everywhere. He dominated from coast to coast, kept the NBA alive. Now look who he's turned Miami in, into. He understands he, who he is. He understands the character that he plays. You know, so this is a story that's being created in the NBA. They need stories to tell. And your story can't be negative. Your story can't be guns. Your story can't be you got to strip her pregnant man or had an abortion. Your story can't be you impregnating porn stars. That The NBA can't have that because they market to kids. Y'all seen what they did with the Steph Curry photo? He doing the golf celebration on the court. They got old girl in the back. She, you know. When they posted on the NBA, they edited her out. We can't have that. This is a married man. This is a golden boy. This is a golden child. We can't have that. We market him to kids. Steph Curry is one of our safe ones. Steph Curry, LeBron James, Jason Tatum. Who else? Giannis. You got to be one of them safe ones. And if you feel like that's you selling out, I get it. I get it. If you feel like that that's you selling out, I get it. But. How do can a defensive player like me get attention of pro coaches? I think picking up 94 feet wherever you play. That gets everybody's attention. Who likes getting picked up 94 feet? Who likes ball pressure? Nobody. And you notice it. Like somebody that has that mentality Yo, he's picking dudes up 94 feet. Like, the, that's going to make them immediately turn and, and look at you because no one else is doing that. Especially in pro situations. That's what Pat Bev did. My homeboy, David Logan, David, he just retired. He played overseas for 20 years, just retired. Phenomenal career. Phenomenal. Played everywhere. Played all in the Euro League, played everywhere. Italy, Greece, Spain, Russia, uh, Man, I'm missing, like, France. I mean, I'm missing so many places, man. Israel, you know, uh, Poland. I mean, he, he played everywhere. And along the way, he came across Pat Bev a few times. And he said, man, he said, he, the first time he came across Pat Bev, he said he was playing somewhere because Davis a point guard. He said he got the ball and turned around. Pat Bev was right there. He's like, man, who in the hell is this nigga put, picking up full court? He said he guarded me full court the whole game. I, and I said, I said, that's why he's where he's at. That's why he's where he's at. Pat Bev averaged 40 in, college, in high school, 38. You know, and now he... He is who he is. How much money has he made? Like, how much? I love going live, man. I miss going live talking to y'all, for real. I, I really do. I realize this is a part of my creator. This is what I do. Everybody can't do this. You know, I disagree. I don't want y'all. He's made $82 million. How serendipitous is that? Group 82. He's made $82 million. So after taxes, you're looking at 41. After, you know, the uh, coon run-ups, I mean, he probably sitting on a nice 25 mil, got a nice, you know, or may, you know, let I me mean, spent this. We probably got, he probably got 11 million. Easy. Saved up. He probably got 11 million saved up. He got a podcast that's popping. That's residual income. He gets guests on there. You know, he's built his brand. He understands he's a part of the story. He's, he's a villain. He's the hyperactive dude. He's the defensive. There's always one of them. He found his story. He plays his character. I'm the dude that helps superstars win championships, at least allegedly. I'm the best defensive player. It's almost like that defensive back mentality. Remember we used to have a defensive back say so used to really talk crazy? These defensive backs now, y'all don't compare, bro. Like, Dion, like, look at Prime now. Prime's talking crazy. And there was nothing you could say because it was the truth. He shut down the whole side of the field. There's nothing you can say. Nothing you can say. You know, so these, these dudes now, like, they don't, they don't be saying nothing. So I say all that, like, 
You know, Pat Bev was one of them dudes. He played that character. And when you play that character, the level at which he played that character, you're going to get rewarded. Matthew Parker. Do you go to Ayalani? Off script. What's up, bro? Being someone who's been around in those ball, do you think there's any manipulations of games in the NBA? I I think human beings are human beings. And I think human beings make mistakes. And I think those mistakes, human beings make decisions. And I think those decisions, you know, human beings are, might think something, but if it's going to go through or not, or if it's going to happen or not at the level where people think it happens all the time and they have exact outcomes, it's just practically impossible. It just, just can't happen. Like, people can't hold water. Like, that, that stuff would just be, you know, all over. But, you know, human beings are human beings. And, you know, nothing surprises me. Why do you think AJ is the best? His ability to make shots, the fact he loves defense, the fluidity and smoothness of his jumper, um, his length, his athleticism, you know, his ball handling has to get better, but and the, the will to win. You know, I'm going to just, I'm gonna just keep it a buck. Um, he hit me up about his video and said, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, this type of kid he is. Like, he didn't see it and see hate. Hate. He didn't see somebody getting off on him. He didn't, he didn't see that. He was like, a lot of stuff he said is true. Like, how, how can you not want to recruit him? That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> podcast killer too, man. I hope yours, your podcast doing doing good. Why do you think a lot of young M NBA players are getting injured? It's because of AAU. I'm so glad you asked this. It's crazy. Me and my homeboys uh, that I grew up with, we was talking about this in the group chat earlier. You know, it, it used to be that. It used to be that. Like, that's what happened to Derrick Rose, Eric Gordon, Greg Oden. You know, hey, you wore them down. I mean, them dudes used to have to play, you know, seven games a weekend. They were playing, like, every other weekend, if not every weekend, especially over the summer. Like, they were playing AAU. They were playing 70, 80, 90 games in the AAU season. Like, it was crazy how many games those dudes were playing. Then they doing, like, the LeBron James Skills Academy, you know, because all those AAU tournaments used to be uh, – um, Pool play, and you had a playoff to the championship. Every tournament had a championship. That's all we knew, right? It, it was like you get in a tournament, there's a trophy, there's a championship. And then when you have so many teams, you got to do pool play, then you do that. And so this is what these dudes got caught up in. They were still being coached by the co people that coached us. And we saw when they got to the league, like, dudes were just wearing down. That's what happened to Derrick Rose. He played so many games. Played outside, he played so many games. So we start understanding that obviously medical technology got better, but we can't be wearing our kids down like that. Like EYBL, like in the, in the most in that weekend, you're playing what, four games, maybe four games in three days? And EYBL, like that's nothing for a 15, 16 year old. That's nothing. That's nothing for a 24 year old who hoops all the time. But I think what has happened is. These dudes do not play other sports. And other sports prepare your body for other types of impact. Basketball is a sport where your body gets hit and twisted and contorted in so many different directions. And I feel like when you play other sports, you develop other muscles and it allows you to have the endurance to play a sport like basketball. Like football and soccer both made me a stronger basketball player. Soccer more so than, than football. Because if I can run on the soccer field, I can run on the basketball court. You know, soccer is basketball, but with your feet. It's really what it is. Dribble, pass, shoot, you set the screen, same thing. Except somebody is at the goal, like, all the time. You know, and these dudes, they haven't done that. And they're eating these vegan diets, these, this gerbil food. You know, they're all skinny. They're all frail. They practice 45 minutes a day. 
their bodies aren't built to go through an 82 game season. Mike didn't really miss no games, man. Go back and check, bro. Like, man, I see. Nah, we 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 finna do this. Like, look at this. 82, 60. This is this is Wizards. Man, we're going backwards. 82, 82, 82, 17. That's when he came back. 78, 80, 82, 82, 81, 82, 82. Got injured, 18, 82. Bro, he was playing every game. Mike was playing every game, man. These dudes, please. Please. They don't, they don't have the physical strength or the mental to play 82 games. That's why dudes like Jokic is killing. Jokic, Jokic don't ever get hurt like that. Think about it. His body type, how he moves, how much he runs, what position he plays, all the stuff Jokic has to do. He don't really be getting hurt like that. You know he ain't out there eating that vegan foo-foo crap. You know he's not. Dude is eating steak and taters. You know he is. Ain't getting hurt. I develop a killer mentality. You know, I know for me, when I felt like I was giving my basketball attention and I felt like I was a player that had a future, for me, every time I stepped on the court, I thought I was the best player ever. I thought I could beat Michael Jordan. I was 9, 10 years old. I, I wholeheartedly, I'm not lying to y'all, thought I could beat Michael Jordan. For, for once the Dayton Daily News in Dayton, Ohio, once they put my name in the paper for basketball, they put our whole team's name, put it in there for a basketball accomplishment, I said, nigga, I am going to the NBA. I was nine years old. I could beat Jordan. All I got to do is throw it through his legs. I, like, I, I told myself this. My dad laughing. I'm like, nigga, I'm serious. But, but you know, when, when you realize, when you have that confidence, you can snatch dudes' souls on the court. But they don't have that confidence. They don't have it. Because there's too many things that steal it. Your coach steals it. Your teammates steal it. The refs steal it. The parents steal it. The scoreboard steals it. Girls steal it. Boys steal it. Friends steal it. The internet steal it. You can hold on to that confidence. Man, I'm better. I won't do it. All y'all suck. And you put in the work behind that, every time you score, it just digs a little deeper in them. And even if you ain't even got to say it, but just like, I'm the best player ever. You got to believe it. I'm going to be the best player ever. No, I'm the best player ever right now because I put in the work. Like, when you get on the court, there needs to be a level of arrogance you have. Steph is arrogant. LeBron is arrogant. Giannis is arrogant. Shaq, Kobe, Michael Jordan. And these are great people. But on the court, arrogant. Think about it. Arrogant. Jokic on the court is arrogant. Tim Duncan was arrogant. Jason Tatum's not arrogant. Uh, John Moran ain't arrogant. Zion Williams ain't arrogant. Anthony Edwards is. Uh, Victor Wimbayama is getting arrogant. When he gets arrogant and his body fills out, he, people keep talking about who the face of the league. The NBA isn't even concerned. It's already been chosen. He's in San Antonio. He's in San Antonio. Olympics in Paris. He's about to be the, he's about to get the world watching him. The globalization of Victor Wimbiama. The Olympics are in Paris, France. I'm pretty sure they're going to do something with the Eiffel Tower and him. Some marketing. Nike's going to do something. And he's, the Olympics are in Paris. The whole world's going to get to see him. And the whole world's gonna go to San Antonio. And he is an amazing athlete. Like he's he's next up. So Hawaii teams are competing more at the Highland Classic. Last year, St. Louis was gonna close to those seven teams. I hope one of y'all do, man. That would be awesome. That would be really awesome. I appreciate the in-depth response. Great insight. Thank you. Nah, man. You know, this is I love this game. Like basketball is a love language for me. You know, and I know how much it brings people together. I know how much it alters people's lives. Like, anything that I can do to help 
any nugget that I can give, anything that I can say that triggers whatever thought that makes a player believe or not believe or whatever, you know, something. I mean, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that because it's, it's just basketball can give you so much. <laughs> like, there's so much. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, it's literally, there's, basketball can create so many opportunities regardless of what your skill level is. You just got to be educated on it. Who's AJ's best comparison? I, I see Jimmy Butler more efficient. Jimmy Butler. Um, besides that, that's it. I don't really see nobody else like that. Elite football players play other sports while elite basketball don't, which is crazy. I'm telling you, it's, it doesn't make sense. Anthony Grooms. What's up, bro? How close are you to becoming an NBA coach? Uh, that's up to Jesus. You know, that ain't got nothing to do with me. That's up to God. I don't know. Hell. <laughs> it's like, uh, I, I, I know that he gives me everything that I need. Jesus Christ is the reason I'm here now. He's the reason I'm making this content. He's the reason y'all even watch my content. Every gift I have comes from Jesus Christ, you know. And so whatever he wants for me, that's where I'm going to be, man. Because when I try to do stuff on my own, man, stuff don't work out. When I, when I do the stuff that Jesus Christ wants me to do, it always works out. So wherever he wants me to coach, that's where I'm going to coach. And I see why he didn't give it to me before. I would have ruined it. I was not spiritually mature enough to coach in the NBA and to have the impact that Jesus Christ has put me on this earth to have. I would have, I would have ruined it. It would have been the biggest regret of my life. Now, I mean, everything that the players go through, I have seen or experienced in some capacity at a much smaller scale, but I still have experienced it. I know what those emotions feel like. I didn't know that before. You know, I know what it's like to have money and have make a lot of money at once. I know what it's like to lose all that money. I know what it's like to feel like you can buy anything. I know what it's like to feel like you can't buy nothing. I know what it feels like when you walk outside. Every time you walk outside, you feel like somebody recognizes you and they look at you as you famous. I know what it's like you walk outside and people don't give a damn who you are. You know, <laughs> I know what it's like that all these new people try to come in your life because they think fame and attention is following you. And I know what it's like when that stuff goes away out and people no longer are around. I know the temptations is out there. I have seen it. I've had it happen to me. Happened to me with social media. This thing is powerful. This thing is powerful. You, you start having videos go off. You know, things in your life change forever. You know, so I didn't know what that was like before. Now I do. And these dudes is hundreds of millions of dollars. All these people paying attention to you. You know, you got to have somebody that gets it. What coach understands social media? Who? Half these dudes can't even read. No doubt, Justin. What's the best way to work out by yourself that actually translate the game? Um, you need to go to YouTube and look up how to work out by yourself. All those drills shooting, getting all that stuff helps. You know, you just got to get organized with it. Like your ball handling, you can do individual ball handling drills and get your handles nice. Shooting, you can get your jump shot. That's how you get your jump shot nice, actually. Like everything, like basketball is a workout by yourself sport. You don't need a trainer. You just need a ball and a rim. It's about footwork. It's about paying attention to detail. It's about holding yourself accountable. It's about doing the same things over and over and over again. When you work out by yourself, you know, you have no one else to hold you accountable. You know if you BS on the footwork. You know if you lost the dribble. You know if that wouldn't have worked in, in a game. You, you know it. Well, are you going to count that rep? You know that when you shot that, it shouldn't have went in and it went in. Are you going to count that rep? Because you want to get the drill done? 
because it's 90 degrees outside and it's hot. So you you gotta learn that. That's a that's a mental toughness. And when you can learn to push yourself and create scenarios for yourself to get better individual workouts, you know, that gives you a rhythm to your game that nobody else can understand. And you, when you get inside of a game, you just, you know, you going through the choreography because you've already done it. Now it's just about making reads. Can you still get D1s and independent teams? I don't even know what that means. Can you do a basketball, on, um, can you do a video on basketball terminology on both sides of the ball? Yeah, yeah, I was into doing, into doing that. I love the response, man. God's plans always better our own. Every time, bro. I don't want no more of my plans, for real. I'm, I have planned myself enough. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want any more of my plans. The Dorian plans, no. I want the Jesus Christ plans. <laughs> That's the only plans I want, bro. I, I am good. Have you ever been a head coach on any level? Yeah, yeah. When I was at Mount Verde, you know, I was head coach of our middle school team. We went 7-1. and one. The team we lost to, we ended up beating them. But, you know, I had a kid on that team uh, that played high major, and he ended up actually getting to the, to the G League, you know. And I played uh, – and then I coached elite AAU, you know, when I was coaching at Andy Hoosiers. That was that was fun. Uh, coaching – Coaching an elite AAU team is fun. <laughs> That's like it's like a it's like a video game. Like that was that was fun, man. That was fun. And like Chris Wilkes and Paul Scruggs and Zach Good and uh, Jalen Attaway and Gary Trent Jr. Like Justin Roberts, T.J. Walton, Kevin Easley. It's like ten Division One guys. That was fun. That was fun. Amen, Coach. You're doing the Lord's work. We appreciate it for real, for real, man. Jesus using me. It's all about him. It's all about Jesus Christ. So social media began to blow up so much hype prospects fail. Yeah, yeah, they have, man. It happened when we were younger, too. But, you know, that, that graveyard of these YouTube sensations that, you know, just didn't work out is long, long, man. And that's why, that's, that's why my first video was why Cooper Flag is overrated because – you know, he – like, they were calling him a generational prospect. Victor Wimbyama is a generational prospect. That's who's a generational prospect, Victor Wimbyama. Like, Zion Williamson, I, is, is he a generational prospect? And y'all – I mean, we talking Zion, like high school Zion, Duke Zion. Is he a generational prospect? Y'all saying Cooper's on that level? That's not fair to him, man. Nah, 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 man. Nah, this, this, you have massive flaws in your game, dude. Nah, we about to point these out because you can't say you weren't ever told because the mother dudes, they, they wasn't told. They wasn't told. Like, I'm not going to name none of them dudes' names, but you can go to YouTube and it's, dudes got millions of views. And you're like, what? He never made the league? Because he was never told. This is where your flaws are, dude. You can do all that for them mixtapes. It's, it's, man, it's, I got to say one, bro, and it's, it's no disrespect, but Seventh Woods, I mean, man, I mean, yo, who, like, who was around when that Seven Woods mixtape dropped? For real. Like, let me know in the, in the comments right now. Like, who was around when that Seven Woods mixtape dropped? Can you get D1 offers on independent teams for AAU? Absolutely. 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 It's about you getting buckets. If you good, they don't care what team you play for. It's going to be harder for you to get seen. But if you good, you good. Somebody going to tell somebody. Like, you, you worry about being good. Just be good. Work on your game, 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 work on your game. Make make your workouts and your your workouts so bad and so grueling that when you get in the game, you feel confident every shot's going in. Ain't nobody ripping me. I'm hitting every layup. I'm in the best shape. You you do that. You'll, you'll get offers, man. It's about being good. You, 
there are more eyes on y'all now than ever before. For us, it literally used to be word of mouth. Somebody had to come see you. Now, you know, Jason Preston, uh, he posted his his highlight tape on Twitter and ended up getting going to Ohio U, if I'm not mistaken. He got drafted. He averaged like two points in high school. <laughs> but he it, it wasn't he's a bum. It was I ain't had my shot yet. He he kept going, kept going, <clears throat> excuse me, kept going, kept going until he got his chance. And once he got his chance, here I am. Well, you make videos on music again. You taught me a lot about the industry. Anthony, I don't know. That's up to Jesus. You know, that's, excuse me, that's up to Jesus. If Jesus want me to do that, I'll do it. But I talked about it so much. I saw so much. I experienced so much. I, I had enough. I had enough, man. I I learned what I need to learn about the music industry. I had enough, bro. That that is. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And once you can't unsee it, you gotta decide how you gonna deal with it. And for me, it's just, it's just it ain't necessary because music's just a hobby to me. I'm good. I can do other stuff. My brother used to tell me about Woods like he was a myth. Man, that nigga said a Woods, bro. Like, I think he was a freshman or something, a sophomore. He was the best freshman guard I had ever seen. I'm like, this, 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 it, it didn't make sense how good, how high he was jumping. It didn't make, it didn't make how he was dunking. It didn't make sense. I said, this dude is going to be the greatest player that the world has ever seen. All he got to do was get an amazing handle and an amazing shot. He would have been unreal. Nobody told him. Clearly. Got to Carolina, was on the bench. I'm like, what? That mixtape was crazy, man. It had me thinking as a teenager that he was NBA ready in high school. That's, we all thought that. I was a grown man. I, was, I had already coached Division I college basketball when that dropped. I had coached at Jacksonville and Lee's McCray. I already coached in Mount Vernon. And I was thinking, I'm like, yo, he he might be able to come out as he might be the first guard that, man, please. The dedication to the craft will always pay off in time, for real. For real. Supermax contracts and be able to destroy rosters. I don't think so, you know, because this is a business and the owners are the ones that are setting these rules. So it's it's not like they're doing it against their will. Like the owners are the ones that are setting the rules. <laughs> so, like, so it's the only thing the NBA did is just they need to spread the talent out, which it, it, it needs to be like that. Like all the talent can't be in two cities, three cities, four cities. You know, every every market needs to have a superstar, you know, because that, that keeps the NBA healthy. Every market has a superstar that keeps the NBA healthy. So that's that's the strategy. And it makes sense. Like, we can't have, like, the fact that Kevin Durant and Steph Curry were both in Golden State with Clay and Draymond, that it was an oversaturation of talent. Like Kevin Durant, your reach and your impact is so large, man. You can be in any other market and you could be a guy that's an anchor for the league. Like why why would you go to the Bay? It just, you know, like when he make when he went to Brooklyn, that makes sense for you. You know, that, and that's the stuff, once again, these dudes aren't really getting talked to about. Like I mean, Kevin Durant, he obviously he saw it from a basketball perspective, but it's like you don't understand the massive impact that you who you are. Like, like Ja, Ja doesn't understand his impact. He has no idea. It's ridiculous. It's it's absolutely crazy. He doesn't understand his impact. And he just diminished it. Like he was they were looking to market him during the Olympics. Like, 
Like he was about to be the next face to NBA. This whole conversation was being had. It was Ja. They were ready. And he just tricked it off. Like, I've never seen that in my life. I, I, I've been following the NBA for 30 years. I have never seen a dude who was about to be the next face and trick it off. Never. Ever. They at least let, they at least grabbed it for a little bit. Hey, I grabbed it for a little bit. You tricked it off. You didn't even get your MVP out of it. <sighs> what are your thoughts on G League and night players doing poorly on the NBA? Is it the night coaches or something else? I think it's the coaches. I really do. Because it, uh, it, it, it doesn't make sense for the veterans and the youth that are on these teams, the level of talent that's on these teams, and they're struggling how they are. You know, the what I think what is, has happened to, and this is the NBA, once again, underestimating the G League, one of the best, one of the best assets that they have, and they still don't get it. Like, they, they can literally have two NBAs. If they pump money into marketing the G League, like, really? They could have two NBAs, and they could destroy football. But they don't see that. But it's like um, every team has their own team now. See, the G League used to be it was like four or five dudes to a team. Now it's not like that. It's like every team got their own team. Like the Pacers used to share it with like the Pistons and I think the Bulls for a little bit. It, now everybody got their own. So – it's not only are we training dudes. Dudes are playing in the G League now. They know if I hoop down here, I'm going to get minutes next week. Like Cam Whitmore, like he ain't coming to the G League playing no games. Bro, I'm here to get these reps. I'm about to come down here and give y'all 40 so I can get back up there and give LeBron, you know, 17. And I'm a rookie. And all this is just building up reps. So next year, this summer, I'm going to be the man. And next year, I'm a, I'm a permanent starter. And y'all ain't going to see me again. Isaiah Thomas coming in cooking. Like this that that the G League is that's the highest level of basketball talent outside of the NBA. It is no longer the Euro League. Because half of the NBA plays in the G League in, throughout the season. It's crazy. Like this is it's for real NBA players. And so who is investing in the G League Ignite infrastructure? Like, who is getting the micro return at that moment for developing a G League Ignite player to an NBA player? Nobody. This is a long-term thing. Everybody else, like the Rockets, they're getting these dudes ready so you can play now, today, actually tomorrow. So I just think because they don't have that, there's just a massive disconnect within the entire organization and it's coming out with the kids getting smoked. I'm from Louisiana. Are there any guys from Louisiana that you coach? Nah, I ain't never coached nobody. How much does passing the ball at the seams matter? Um, I don't really understand, mm -hmm. but if I, I think I kind of get what you're saying. I, I just feel like when you become a confident ball handler and you have the ball in your hands all the time and you allow the ball to spin in your hands, like you, you learn to position the ball however you need to position it. Like you don't. Like, I, I don't think about passing at the seams. I just, every time I have the ball, when I'm ready to pass, it, I'm on the seams. I don't think about shooting at the seams. Every time that I get the ball here, I, like, I'm, I'm at the seams. I did something. You know, it's like, it's like. Like, this is a, this is a legit, this is a real NBA ball. Like, this is. Literally, what they play with. And, like, 
no, no matter how I get the ball or what I have going on, like it's it's going. I'm not about to spin that. I'm gonna break everything up here. It's like I want to get it right, but I want to. Like once I get it to here, bro, like I'm gonna be on the scene. So it's just about like when you dribbling and when you positioning it, you got to get like a feel for the ball. Like it should it should feel weird when 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 your hand is like this. It should feel weird. It should feel weird when you dribble. It should feel weird when you pass. Like you should want to auto correct yourself immediately. Once that ball's in your hands to get on them scenes and like just holding it and getting used to it. You know, that's the type of stuff where you start developing those pads, like on the tips of your fingers. And that's what makes you a really good ball handler, right? Because you're dribbling with all of that because the ball is very comfortable in your hand. That's, you know, it's like a rock. So that's why I say ball handling is very, sorry, I know I was already back on the mic. That's why I say ball handling is very important, like working on it. Every single day, because you know, it gets you right. Could Jai ever fully revive the hype he created? I think Memphis will get behind him. Um, I don't think the NBA will ever take that risk with him again. Crazy NCAA has been exploiting players of foreign IL existed. Yeah, that's what they do. It's my last year for AAU. I want to go on a circuit team. I'm probably not going to play. But if I go on an independent team, I'll definitely play a lot. You need to go where you're going to play a lot. You, you need that's Playing time is the most important. That's every level of basketball. You know, always value playing time. That's the most important thing. You don't, There's no reason to be on a team and then not get on the floor. It makes zero sense. Like, that is that – is, Always go down a level if you need to to get playing time. That is an ego thing. That's a that's a that stuff eliminates dudes. You just need to play. You need to play as much as you as you can. And if you're good, you are good. And that stuff, those reps, man. You get reps as being a really good player. You get reps as being a number one player. You get reps as being the guy that has to take twenty shots a night. Like that's the type of player you want to be, right? Like, do you want to make the NBA? Do you want to be an NBA All-Star? Do you want to be an All-NBA player? Do you want to be a Hall of Fame player? Them dudes take 30 shots a night if they need to, 40 shots. How many shots Luka take a night if he need to? You think Luka cares about, you know, passing the ball? You think Luka cares about the teammates? He don't, really. He does it because it's the right play. But Luka's shooting that ball, dude. Every two, three, four possessions, Luka putting one up. If he hitting, he keep putting it up. You know, if you want to be the best player, you got to take that best player mentality. And you go to an independent team, but if you average 50, <laughs> and people are like, how can you average 50? Somebody averaging 50 right now. You go look at all these basketball stats that's taken across the country. Somebody in Iowa, somebody in Missouri, you know, somebody averaging 50. Boys or girls, somebody averaging 50. They getting 50 a night. Why, why can't you do that? Have you prepared yourself to do that? You know, that's that makes a lot more sense to me than going and playing on some Adidas circuit team so you can get some free shoes and sit the bench. The jaw hype I feel with Anthony Edwards. That, that's a good read. I think uh, Anthony Edwards is not going to be the face of the NBA. I don't think he has the basketball IQ to win. Opinion on Rob Dillingham potential. <laughs> uh, I'm editing a video on him right now. Um, he he has to decide who he wants to be, and he got to decide fast. Do you want to be Lou Will, microwave off the bench? You want to be Malik Monk type? You want to be Bones Highland type? Because, you know, that don't really last that long. It does. It's exciting. It might get you a little paper, but it gets you traded a lot, and it don't last that long. Or do you want to be the Trey Young, where the franchise is built around you, the Steph Curry, where the franchise built around you? Well, if you want to be that, you know, there's some stuff you need to get better at right now, like today. But, you know, so i say that for the video, though. You think John Morant going to another team so they took back his contract? Uh, they didn't take back his contract. Um, so, 
he still has his contract. He's still getting paid. I think if Memphis doesn't win next year or if they get off to a crazy start, I, I think the coach, once their coach gets fired, um, Ja will probably get traded. Because if I'm Memphis, I'm rolling with Jared Jackson and Desmond Bain together over Ja and one of them other dudes. Like, I, I feel like <clears> – <throat> I feel like Memphis could trade Trey for Ja straight up, and I would do that today, actually. I would trade Trey Young for Ja Morant today, and Atlanta would do it. And that's where Ja needs to be, to keep it a buck. And you put Trey in Memphis, man, hey. And you know he's going to play. You know Trey going to play. Because Trey is way safer than Ja. You think Cooper will develop his shot in Duke? That's that, that comes down to his work ethic. If he is this kid that they say he is and he has the work ethic and he understands his role and all that, then he knows he needs to get a jump shot. He knows that. He knows that. That's that's He should be working on that right now. All that is is 1,000 makes a day. That's it. That's all that is. Cooper is 1,000 makes a day. That's all, that, that's all that is. And it, for who he is, for the, for the brand he has right now, he can get three people to rebound for him. He can – that is two hours of work a day for real. That's it. He could get six people to rebound. He could have a machine in there to make sure he makes a thousand threes a day. If he does that, he could be one of the best players ever. But that takes a – how much does playing experience matter when trying to become a coach? I don't think it matters at all. What matters is if you know what you're talking about. If you know what you're talking about, they're going to listen to you. If what you say makes sense, if it helps them get better, that's all players care about. That's all coaches care about. If you can bring some sort of asset to the program, you know, like, because you understand the game. You understand the game, you understand the game. Can you articulate it to other guys? But that's – playing experience don't matter like that. Now, there are certain things that I will never be able to speak to. You know, but that's why you got to have guys on your staff that can do that. Like, I'm always, when I, when I become an NBA head coach, I'm always going to have former players on my staff. You have to. It's, it's, it's. Coach K, he surrounded himself with former players. Coach K would be the only dude on his staff who didn't play at Duke. Bob Knight would be the only dude on his staff who didn't play at Indiana. You know, it's, not a, those are college coaches, but there's some, when you are a basketball patriarch, that's how it's supposed to be. Can E.I. Ellis actually be a good college player? Uh, he looks like the average overrated, I'm getting attention because I'm playing in big spotlights and sometimes I have good games, you know, kid that only he could or he could be, you know, like Gabe York without the athleticism. Hey, that's that's who Eli Ellis is, and Gabe York, he had a chance, you know. What's your prediction in NCAA tournament? I, can, I don't know anymore. Man, I, man, these kids is crazy, bro. I can't keep up. And people that know me, like my roommate from college right here, Bobby, you know, he he knows me. Okay, I love basketball. Bobby, I can't keep up with college now. It's crazy. Will the Pacers ever return to the NBA Finals? Where is Indiana University basketball headed? Bobby, I, I'm thinking about making a video about IU basketball. <laughs> But it's, it's, it's going to piss a lot of people off. It's going to piss a lot of people off. We, we are like, – we need to have a serious discussion about the old IU basketball fans and the current IU basketball fans. We, we drove – we I, – I can't even say we. They drove Liam McNeely away. Liam McNeely was on Twitter like, these folks are crazy. Like, yeah, they are. They're absolutely insane. And they think it's, they think it's passion. It's not. Something, there's something – we, Indiana University's basketball patriarch got, the, the feds came and kicked the door in, snatched him out the bed, put guns in everybody's face, 
threw him on the floor, handcuffed him, dragged him out butt naked, threw him into the paddy wagon, and dropped him off in Lubbock, Texas, and we didn't see him for another 20 years. That's what happened to Indiana University basketball patriarch, today daddy. And they've never recovered from that PTSD. The way that IU treated Bob Knight has left a wound so open that these people just can't get past it. They compare everything to Bob Knight. They're obsessed. It's, it's, it's the nastiest thing I've ever seen. It might be the worst fan base in sports. The delusion is insane. They think we're going to get Scott Drew. What? <laughs> Will the Pacers ever return to the finals? We we need someone who, who's angry. The team is too nice. We need guys that want to fight. We need a, we need Dylan Brooks. Do you think DJ Wagner is one done? Absolutely not. And he is not very good. And I, you know, and I, and <laughs> him, Isaiah Collier, Justin Edwards, and Ahmad Bradshaw. When I saw them in the McDonald's game, and I saw them in the Nike Hoop Summit. I could not believe how good these kids weren't. Like, it, it, I was shocked because I hadn't really been following high school basketball like that recently because, you know, I was doing other stuff. So I got back into it, and I'm looking, and I'm texting my homeboy who follows it, like, religiously. And I'm like, dude, are, th these, are these dudes really the best? He was like, yeah. I said, these kids suck. Like, none of them are good. And look at them. Isaiah Collier, DJ Wagner, Ahmad Bradshaw, Justin Edwards. I was, I was seeing them at the top of my drafts. So I'm like, uh-uh, nah, come on, man. Come on. These, these kids ain't ready. And that's when I realized, I'm like, yo, the scouting now is crazy. The scouting now is crazy. Like, these, these folks do not know what they're looking at. Like, I, I was trying to make DJ Wagner good because I saw his dad. His dad was good. Wani was good. Yo, DJ is nowhere close. Like, he, man, he needs to stay all four years keeping a buck. And he needs to stay all four years in, in, he needs to stay all four years. LM nice, though. He got a lot of flaws, bro. How bad? How big do you think the gap is between the worst NBA player and the best WNBA player? I believe the main reason is the huge guys are good WNBA players don't play against men every day. Uh, I think it's irrelevant to the conversation. You know, like <laughs> women's college basketball has passed men's. Like this is a reality. You know, people can keep acting like this stuff's a joke. A lot of girls play basketball. A lot. A lot. A lot. And it's, it's, it's getting to the point where it's like a lot of these girls can do stuff that's, that the dudes could never do. It used to be I would watch a WNBA player when I was younger. I was like, okay, I can do everything that she practically can do. Man, I be seeing chicks in high school now. Like, how the hell did she do that? <laughs> it's like, it's, it's like, it's like the, the skills is crazy. It's like, yo, that, that, I don't, if you love ball, man, I don't know how you can't watch women's basketball. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, they be hoping their reads be on point and, like, they hit the shot. Like, Caitlin, man, she be splash. What do you think Bronny Sealing is if he makes it to the lead person? I think he'd be a side role player at best. I don't even know how good Bronny James is. He has never had a chance to show how good he is. I love what Gilbert Arena is doing with his son. He's making him play with them kids who ain't going to play past high school. You need to figure out how to be the best player, and we got to still win. Bronny's always been on good teams. What? Like, I don't even know what he can do good. Because I see glimpses like, oh, it looks like he can shoot. Oh, it looks like he can defend. Oh, it looks like he can dunk on somebody. Oh, it looks like he can penetrate and get past anybody. Oh, it looks like he got good vision. Oh, it looks like he can make the right decision to come off the pick and roll. Oh, it looks like he can catch lobs. And then you be like, does he know what's going on? 
You know, so it's it's just it's just hard to evaluate him because he has so much happen to him. You know, so I, I hope he comes back to school. If he comes back to school, he'll have the entire offseason where he knows I'm playing at USC next year. I'm going to be the starting point guard. I'm going to be the man. I know what our team going to look like. I know who my coach going to be. My dad's here. Like, I know I'm healthy. Like, he can, he can have the, the mental, I feel, will be just in a more stable place where he can show, like, hey, this is who I am as a basketball player. And I don't think much would change with his draft stock. You know, like, I think wherever he would get drafted right now, unless he just looks absolutely just – there's no way he can play at this level – you know, I think he'll get drafted at the same spot next year. But, but he'll go into it with a clean mentality because, you know, the moment you come into the NBA, you're a LeBron. Now it's the countdown for when you and your dad play together. Like, that's the next thing. LeBron going back to the Lakers next year. So, if Bronny comes out, the likelihood of going to the Lakers is slim to none. And teams are going to draft Bronny to try to get LeBron because LeBron still can play, you know. So it's going to be the whole storyline the entire season is like this is going to be Le- LeBron's last year in L.A. because he's going to go join whatever team got Bronny. So now you really got a year to be your, yourself, but instead of a year to be yourself being in college, it's in the NBA. In college, you're not going to have that much – I mean, in the NBA, you're not going to have that much control. You're not the man. Whatever team you go to in the NBA, you might be a G League dude. In college that year, you have to yourself bare minimum, you're the man. You get to see. You get to experience school. Like, you in college, bro, like, you know, take advantage of that. So, I, I hope that Bronny stays. If he don't, nah, I think Brandon Miller pretty good. Who are the high school players in today's game that made the game simple and you like? A.J. DeBonsa, Dylan Harper. Uh, those, are the, those are the two guys I like. Everybody else is. Learning curves gonna be a lot steeper. Have you seen Juju? Well, yeah, Juju's Juju can go. She can go. She shoot a lot, but so does Caitlin. But she she can go. Ooh, crap! You got a choice. What NBA team? Or doesn't matter. San Antonio Spurs, Clippers, or Charlotte Hornets. You know, one of those three. Like, those are the ones that I would want to work for. I love women's college basketball, hoping Caitlin Clark can break records on the next level, hoping she goes to a team and lets her play her way. The Pacers, Pacers, the Fever should let her play her way. Um, That's going to be fun. It's going to be lit. Do you see Wimby as a little brother at 6'8", 6'10"? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not that impressive, you know, but, but like it's it's like can he play? You know, Wimbi Yama, man, he he is like people don't understand how good he is. They do not understand how good Wimbi Yama is. They don't get it. Like he is. Like it's it's kind of like LeBron, like you, you know, it's like how how good is this dude gonna be? It's very interesting, you know. It's it's very interesting. Like how how good is is this guy going to be? When should the kids start plyometric exercises? I don't know, man. Let your kids play. How do you feel about Shea Gilders Alexander? Do you think he's a superstar as a number one option on the championship winning team? Um, I think that's tough. I think that's tough to say at this point because oh, let me change this banner. Because he doesn't have a championship team around him. He's only been on that team. Um, and, you know, this is the first year they've really had big expectations where, you know, I don't think anyone would be shocked if they went to the finals. You know, if they won a championship, it would be the start of a dynasty. But 
I just feel like Jalen Williams or Chet is going to have to really turn into um, am I possibly a 1A myself? And I think when that happens, I think they will be a really, really good team. And all those draft picks they have, all that young talent they have, all Sam Press is going to have to do is really plug in veterans that are exceptional at their roles and they're going to be able to do that for us a while because they have a lot of assets. They'll be able to replace and reshine, you know, the big that has to be in the dunker spot, the shooters that got to be in the corner, you know, the defensive perimeter guy that locks up dudes with Chet, the, the backup center, you know, who is like a Chet replica, you know, the – the maybe like the combo guard if they had like a Malik Monk or some or something like that. You know, they're gonna have to like fill those spots. And when they fill those spots with those role players, they're gonna have a really good team. But, you know, uh, the thing about it is Sam Presti has never really done it. He's had a lot of talent. He's gotten a lot of assets and he's done a lot of stuff, but he ain't, you know, what they got to show for it. Like he been a he been a GM for a long time. He got the job when he was 30. He been in GM for a long time. One finals appearance? I'm just saying. You know, at a, at a certain point, you got to start looking at who people really are. There's no disrespect, but the facts are the facts. So he, he's, in a, he's put them in a very good spot. This should lead to a championship. There's really no reason that it shouldn't. Like, all these assets with that talent – with those personalities, and you need to get rid of Josh Giddy now. Like, now. <laughs> What's your opinion on Ace Bailey? I did a whole scout report on him. Go go watch that. How's overseas basketball work with politics on that? I don't know. I don't know. It's not my expertise. Wimby is an underrated playmaker. He is. In five years, what do you think about NBA contact? Because now it's crazy. Contact or contracts? Contracts, you know, um, Tatum's going to sign for like 350 this year. Uh, next summer, I think Luca signs for 400 So that's two. Then I think that might be Trey and them. No, Luca's Trey. Then after that, it should be Ja. Jaron, Jaron will probably get it. Jaron will probably sign for four fifty. Ant or Mello or Tyrese gonna sign for five hundred. So who was twenty twenty one draft? That's Cade and them and Evan Mobley. Yeah, one of them dudes going to sign for 500 something million dollars. Scotty Barnes. Yeah, Scotty Barnes, one of them dudes going to get $500 million. That's, that's what it's going to be. I mean, that's that's where this is going. You talk about these NBA contracts. Like, it's it's the, the money that these dudes are about to make is it's absolutely insane. Like, you know. I don't think people understand. Like, no one in America gets paid, like, $100 million cash for, like, five years in a row. Nobody gets that. Not even, like, CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. Their overall compensation might be $100 million a year, but that's stock options and all up types of stuff. Like, bro, y'all getting cash. Cash. How powerful that is. There are companies that are publicly traded that don't have a hundred million dollars cash. And y'all about to be getting that every year. You're they're, you're gonna be a I mean these players are gonna be as valuable as publicly traded companies. 
Every Supermax player is his own billion-dollar entity. He has a billion-dollar valuation. It's coaches, too. Coaches, too. Coaches, too. They just haven't figured out how to do it. Do you think Pollard gets a ring and win before he retires? I'm not sure. I'm not sure when Pop wants to retire, you know. Um, I would love to take that over. I would love to take that over. I love to be Wimby's coach. How can you be successful as a late boomer for basketball? Just keep playing. You keep playing, man. You get better, you keep playing, bro. And when there's eyes, you go play. You keep asking around. You, you get on teams based on how old you are. Like, you 18, you know you need to play college basketball. Go get on the college basketball team and just play good. You can get on somebody's team. It's not hard, man. Like, y'all – Y'all make this harder than it, than it is. Now, I'm about to <clears throat> talk to y'all like I used to talk to the musicians. Y'all really make this harder than it is with the basketball stuff. I wish someone had told me this. There's, there's so many basketball teams, so many college basketball teams, not just the ones you see on TV. There's like thousands of teams, and they have to get people, and they keep score. And there's refs, and there's coaches. They get paid. They got to recruit, and they give you grants. Or even a scholarship, and you get to go to college, you get to meet people, you get to leave a legacy, like you get to get educated, find a chick, fall in love. And if you play really good, you're gonna go pro. Someone's gonna come see you, somebody. Because if, if you play really good, no matter what level, the word gets out, the tape gets out. You just gotta get good and, and go. You know where you're supposed to be. You know if you're in high school, you're supposed to be playing high school basketball. You know you're supposed to play AAU. Find a high school where you're going to play. Find an AAU team where you're going to play. And just play and be good. You know when, when you're 18, 19, you're supposed to be playing college basketball. Find a college where you're going to play and be good. And if your parents don't help you, you know, you need to have a real conversation with them. Like, are y'all really trying to help me achieve my dreams? If if not, don't get in the way. And that might be the start of y'all relationship deteriorating. But you got to be prepared to do that. Because they might not understand it. It ain't for them to understand. This is what I want to do. Because if you are a, a teenager right now, bro, this is this is your time. This is your time. Like, you you can't waste. Get up every day and hoop. And find somewhere where you can hoop and find a way to get there. The better you are, the more people help you. Do you think his draft class is strong? The draft class sucks. Who's the most underrated and overrated NBA player right now? I don't, I don't know. What do you think about OTE? I think it's good. I think OTE does a good job of uh, getting good talent. I think the dudes play hard. I think they do a good job of giving you insight. You know, I've watched games and I've been able to see things that that I noticed about players, and they it was the same things I noticed when I saw them play school ball or AAU, like Cameron Boozer, Robert Dillingham, uh, the Thompson twins, Santo Surreal. You know, like I've been able to scout these dudes, Dylan Harper, and watch these dudes at OTE. And when I saw them play with school ball or AAU, it was the same type of stuff. So that shows me that dudes are taking it serious. So I like it. I like what it, I like what they're doing. Do you think Jaden Ivey is the right guard to build, up, build with next to Cade? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Is being shifty a play style? Yeah, it is. How many of them dudes last in the NBA, though? What team do you think Zach Eady is going to in the in the draft? Zach Eady is terrible. Okay, like he's that big clunker, big clunker, big man. That that character has been retired. Like it, that doesn't work anymore. The big clunker, like George Murasan, you know Taco Fall, even a little bit of Yao Ming. Yao had post moves; he could shoot, but. You know, Sean Bradley, you know, Rick Smith, and he can shoot it too. But 
that that big clunker, bro, is is over. Like you, you can't be clunky. It's it's too much one on one, man. You are going to get destroyed. You're not long enough. You're not fast enough. You don't jump high enough. Like you know, just seven four don't mean what it used to. Giannis is seven foot. KD is seven foot. Anthony Davis is seven foot. You know, you that four inches, bro, is not as advantageous as it once was. Wimby seven five. You can't guard him. Who who can you guard? Nobody. And we got to pass the ball inside of you and hope that that you finish. And you got to pass the ball at, back. So you know he he gonna get on some teams and he gonna get on some benches and he gonna probably have some good games. But last man, absolutely not. Bro, he don't – he's he's weak. I watched him play a lot. It's not very good. I ain't even seen Buddy play. You know, I haven't. I'm, you know, when it comes to watching these dudes, if if I if you don't jump off the screen, I'm not watching you. I'm telling you, these, these kids suck now, man. They used to be pretty good. But these dudes now, they suck. They suck. It's a lot of dudes who aren't very good basketball players, and they're just right school, right time, right parents, right size, right athleticism, right drills, right coach, and just and now you watching them. It's like you you in the ACC and you can't hit that three, like they dropping back on you like you Rondo. You can't pull that, bro. You six six. Like, you suck. Like you, this it's crazy. I it's, I watch college basketball now. I'm like, I can't believe man, the team the other day, man, halftime, man, they had nine points. Like, what, bro? It's the conference tournament. You lose. It's halftime. It's fifty two to nine to a team that just fired a coach. Pepperdine just fired Lorenzo Romar. This is their interim coach. You scored nine points in the first half. I forget who the team was. You are Division I basketball players. You getting your school paid for. Now I got to figure out who that was. I'm, what am I doing? I'm on here with y'all. I'm looking stuff up on my phone. I don't forgot. Y'all click the links in the bio, man. Download to buddy, all that. Man, what was the Pacific. That's that's who it was. They ain't had no coach neither. Nine points, bro. Nine points. And I want y'all to look at this, right? So this is this is stuff I, I want y'all to pay attention to, right? To show y'all how this business works. Okay, so we're going to do Pacific basketball coach. No, it was Leonard Perry. Did he get fired? Yeah, by Coach Leonard Perry, who was last a head coach at the University of Pacific. Okay, so he just got fired this year. Okay, so University of Pacific. Is this a public school or private um, University of, of the Pacific. This is a private. Okay, so we might not be able to get this information, but let's see. Okay, Pacific basketball coach Leonard Perry salary. Okay. He was relieved of his duties, Josh Newman. They all say a salary. He 
his salary at his last school was two hundred and thirty thousand. So you know he's making more than that. All right, let's do Pacific basketball coach salary. All right, we can just do this so y'all can see. So they in the conference. Private schools, it's hard to find uh, how much. But okay, so this is Pepperdine. Now Pepperdine, you know, they put their stuff out there. But key, em key employees and officers, right? He just got fired. This is over the president, the senior VP of investments and chief information officer, the executive, P executive VP at the school. He was the highest paid employee, 760 thousand dollars this is how much these coaches are being paid in this conference where they are scoring nine points and a half like nine points and a half they recruited guys who are scoring nine points and, a half. and like pepper and i like i said they just fired their coach and they they were the ones that had 52 points but they just fired a coach because they suck what what jobs do y'all know that aren't inter that aren't like you know what people consider them famous people jobs that pay seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year? What? No, don't no doctor really pay that. You got to be like a specialized surgeon to get that. You got to be a special type of attorney to get that. Like you, you got to be inside of finance to get that. It only people that make money like that is entrepreneurs. Like these coaches make a lot of money. And the output that you see from the money that they make is absolutely insane. Nine points? There's no way you can be in a conference where the, this coach is making 760000 So you know, you know Leonard Perry had to be making half a million at least. And your team has scored nine points and a half? Bro, that's, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And this is the stuff that People like just kind of gloss over when we talking about basketball. Like, how can you gloss over this? Like, look at this. Look at this. this is a conference tournament. You lost one hundred and two to forty three. That is. That is, that's insane. That's insane. So, but I appreciate all y'all, man. Give super thanks, super chat. If you've been watching, click the links below, get in the courses. We got courses for creators. We got courses for musicians. We got all types of courses down there. TubeBuddy, install that. It's free. It really helps you YouTube. Helps you understand how it works. Um, and enroll. And then donate, bro. You know, this stuff costs money. My life costs money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I need money to survive. <laughs> and if y'all love the content and what I'm doing, hey, do that. And go to the services, man. Like, for real. You know, I want to I wanna do this. And I, and I say this the same way I was telling people when I was doing the music stuff. Like, I'm not going to have the time to always do this like this is not a service it's like oh it's always going to be here Dorian is always going to do group 82 basketball stuff no it's not man no it's not like I told y'all what my goal is and the moment that that picks up all this other stuff stops it's just what it is I'll still do content but I will not be doing like any of these things so if you're someone who's really trying to get better you're trying to get scouted you know you you need to seriously Go to group A2basketball.com, click these services, and you need to really come in here and see what it is that you need. Because I'm telling you, I've been around this game for a long time. I've been, you know, and I'm at the point where I can say that. I have a lot of experience. I've done a lot of stuff inside this game. I have been in a lot of rooms. I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people talking about basketball. You know, there's pretty much no basketball person that if I really needed to, I couldn't get in touch with and get them on the phone if I really needed. You know what I'm saying? Like, based on who it was, it, that's how, it matters how long it would take. But I could do that. I, I tell y'all all that is to let you know that, like, you know, no one's doing this. No one's doing this. And they can't. 
They can't. No one's doing this. So if you want your jump shot analyzed, your game analyzed, written scout report, whatever it is, you got to you got to take advantage of this. You got to take advantage of this. Yeah. If you don't, like you really got to ask yourself am I trying to get better? This these are real questions. And I used to say this to the musicians, and I believed it with them, but I knew most of them were so lazy it would never happen. So I would tell them to ask themselves, like, do I really want this? I knew that was like a question a lot of them had never even asked themselves because they're, they're just naturally lazy. When you're a basketball player, you ask yourself that a lot. You have to because you go through a lot quick and at young ages. And so as a basketball player, like, you have to ask yourself, do I really want to be the best player I possibly can? If not, how, if I do, how can I not invest in this? How can I not invest in getting a complete breakdown of my game and what I suck at and how to get better at it for the whole package is, what, $300? Man, please. That's, that's six workout sessions with somebody. And they're, and they're not even going to be able to break you down the way I can. Giving you the stuff that, that you need, you know that. All they're doing is taking you through drills and getting the money. But, you know, to each his own. But I, I'm going to start going live more often. We got to get this Instagram popping. But I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I'm out the pond. Y'all stay true.